I hope justice is found before justice finds you on bad movies. Rule the worst movie podcast ever recorded. And today, the Human Movie Database has logged in. Ryan Farrell's in the house. We got the machine punter mummer at the table. And the doctor is in. Ryan Madela is on the clock. I'm James Hauser, your host. Let's go. We're doing Daredevil 2003. We have to differentiate because there's also a Daredevil 2015. Sure. That we definitely will never talk about on this show. Yeah, <laughs> that's a TV that show, though. The too, TV right? show, though? That's the TV show. We don't really do TV shows. We don't. We also don't do things that are really good and awesome that's and perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, but, okay, technically... Yeah, not on this show. No, I didn't, we I didn't a, even see that one coming. You've never seen it? No, I've seen it. Okay, I was just making a blind pun. Oh, there's going to be I a, didn't a see lot it coming. How many you got in the hopper today? I got at least eight. Okay. This a good solid <laughs> eight. Is right this now. your list? Perfect. No, 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 no I don't put out a list that anymore. Would be, that would be a thousand. Yeah, that would be too much. Well, look, for those of you who have never joined the show before, welcome into Bad Movies Rule. We are going to walk through the movie like we do every single week. This is Daredevil 2003. We're going to go scene by scene through the entire movie. Then at the end, and we'll also give you the particulars ahead of time so that you know what you're getting into. At the end, we'll give it some awards. Who was the best? Who was the worst? Who were our favorites? And ultimately, is this actually a bad movie or is it a bad movie that rules or is everyone crazy? And it's a straight up good movie. We're glad you guys are along for the ride. Daredevil, you guys. I think the last uh, superhero movie we did was Captain America. Yes. 1990. Oh, Which sure. I was briefly a part of that one. Yeah. <laughs> you mean that completely forgettable movie that nobody saw? That's the, I saw it when I was a kid. <laughs> Me and Bob wore that VHS out. Yeah. Uh, a couple of you are back again from the Green Lantern episode, right? Ooh, yeah, both here yeah. For that here one. we go. Yeah. I also missed out on that one. <laughs> so we've done quite a bit. But Kurt, you're here now. That's I what matters, here. man. I am here now. Right? Yeah. We got you. I'm for glad Kurt is here for Daredevil because this is one of them properties that I don't have the most familiarity with. Oh. So to get his perspective. Oh, I thought you, you were just glad that he had to now suffer beside you. Like, I'm glad he finally gets a <laughs> no, chance to no, suffer. Yeah. <laughs> He had to miss out on Green Lantern. Right. That son of a bat. Ooh, I almost said something else. All right. <laughs> How about we dive straight into the vitals for this movie? All Let's right. do it. Movie was written and directed by Mark Steven Johnson, the three named wonder, who prior to, <laughs> prior to this had only ever done Simon Birch. Right. Right. That was his who only. Simon right. Birch. What is that? I don't have it's a crickets a, noise on here. It's hearing a uh, movie with Jim Carrey. <laughs> oh, okay. It, is Jim Carrey in Simon Birch? Yes. Oh. Yeah, he is. Where, who is he is in he? Simon Birch? He was he was the narrator. Oh, oh. well, okay. Yeah. No. What I, about the special kid? That I don't know who that was. I never saw the movie. Yeah. So it, any, it, have you seen it? No. Is it good? No. Nope. I don't think anyone's seen this movie. Hello out there in the internet world. If you've seen Simon Birch, shoot up a flare. Because I don't know if I've ever heard anyone talk you know, about it. I've seen it, but I don't remember it. Oh, that's really? the problem. Really? Okay. Yeah. Maybe that's yeah. everybody. That, that I am everybody. I just I just purchased <laughs> I rented it, I watched it, and I said, I'm forgetting about this movie. Just because it had Jim Carrey's name on it. <laughs> yeah, that's but, honestly what happened. I bet. I, I would have watched his it for name Mark was on it. Johnson. I rented it and then I went. He's barely in this movie. All right, so this was the era of Marvel movies before the Marvel Studios was a thing. We'll call it the before the watershed moment That's in right. comic book movie. Pre-Iron Man. We call it uh, yeah. before. No, no, before. no, no. Pre-Batman Begins, sir. Okay, I'm talking about the MCU. Why the MCU? Because that's because DC. Marvel. Marvel. I'm talking about Marvel. But we're talking about comic book movies. If you want to talk in general, yeah. Batman Begins is not the watershed moment of comic book movies. It's Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. Spider-Man, yeah. Definitely Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Sure. 100%. I don't know. Pete that was what moved into like, you know, from Bully Maguire. Come on. This nonsense Bully Maguire look, in number look. three. I'm going to put some. You're right. Well, now it's Sony, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, in Fox, I feel like kind of put their spin on what, the way they, they did their movies mm. was very cheesy, mm. but still good. Yeah. They saw what. Spider-Man made at the box office. Correct. I'm assuming this is what happened, and they're like, yo, Marvel, let me get some of that red-suited superhero action <laughs> over here yeah. to the tune of $100 million in the first weekend or whatever right. it was that... I mean, this didn't do... Spider-Man, no, when that came out to Tobey Maguire, they hit a hundo that first weekend. Mm -hmm. That was big. And wow. everyone lost their minds. No, that was big. Yeah. Right? yeah. 
But there was also Brian Singer's X Men, which was before that, which 20th Century Fox also did. Yes, which I think is the first m- comic book movie that was really well done and taken seriously. It right. just didn't get it, the big pop that Spider Man got from no. a box office standpoint no. and all that. But yeah. I said Batman Begins as the watershed moment because yeah. to me, it's one of those. This was the first big two and a half hour epic, mm-hmm. kind of goes into like a really detailed backstory of like Bruce Wayne's on this adventure and mm. yeah and Iron Man's yeah. a ripoff of Batman Begins okay so, so and it has nothing to do with the fact that you're a fanboy for Christopher Nolan I'm not a Christopher Nolan fanboy yes you are <laughs> okay first of all because <laughs> this is the funny thing you <laughs> you're a fanboy for Christopher Nolan I have not yes you are how so you, I every, think you are James first of all <laughs> out of nowhere out of nowhere he would just be like Bro, Inception, like this is now 12, yes. 12, 13 years ago, like, bro, Inception's coming out this weekend. Yeah. Bro, we going to see The Dark Knight Rises. Like, and I'm like, okay, yeah, first sure. of all, just because it was Batman, not because it was Christopher <laughs> Nolan. And Inception, well, what about Inception? Because I thought that was coming off the hot heels of, of The Dark it Knight was. and all that, it right? It really was. was. Like, but then I never saw Interstellar. I still to this day haven't seen Interstellar. Really? I, I hated I hated Tenant. I'm probably I've never seen the what was the war movie he made? Dunkirk. Uh, Dunkirk. Dunkirk. Thank you. Never seen it. Yeah. If I was such a fanboy, I would have seen all of these movies. I'm disappointed in you. No. Yeah. Screw Christopher Nolan. Really? In fact, he's a hack. I'll say wow. it right here. <laughs> because of Tenant? <laughs> okay. you, you, because of Tenant? And the prestige never saw that piece of garbage either. So uh, yeah, that would never qualify for this show. <laughs> I mean, I can't. I, I at least can't wait till we cover the Fantastic Four yeah, movies. See, there oh, we go. Yeah. From Fox. I almost bought a box set because I was like, man, I have Daredevil on a full screen DVD. <laughs> nice. I was like, I was like, I want to see That's Daredevil terrible. at least on Blu-ray. And there was like a box set that had Fantastic Four, yeah. Fantastic Four: Rise of Silver Surfer, and yeah. Daredevil Director's Cut for like fifteen bucks. I was like, That's I should just get that. Well, look, Mark Stephen Johnson lobbied hard for this movie. He, he did. Had, he'd only ever done Simon Birch. He'd gone through. It changed hands between studios, between people developing it. At uh, one point, Chris Columbus was attached to it. He continued the to dude get, that discovered America. Re, no, a different that's what Christopher I was just Columbus, oh, like, right. the guy that did Home Alone. Been around for a right? while. Oh, Home and Alone, that's a good movie. He fought and got rehired a couple times, and finally got the chance to do it because he himself was a huge Daredevil fan. Yep, nice. and wanted to do it a specific way. I, and I think as we get into it, we'll talk about. Maybe possibly to his detriment. Uh, movie starred Ben Affleck, Jennifer Garner, Colin Farrell, Michael Clark Duncan, well with a slew of other people that we'll get into here as well. Yeah. And uh, the thing, so it was a President's Day weekend's of February release, which means they had a ton of confidence in this movie. Right. For a February release. Yeah, that seems like a really bad time to release. January, something. February tend to be the dumping grounds for studios to get stuff out. January, September, but, yeah. you know, tomato, plop, potato, whatever. Yeah, sure. Uh, $78 million budget. Tomato, potato. Tomato. It was originally only a $50 million budget. They got a $30 million increase as they were going along. Mm-hmm. Box office of $179 million. 5.3 currently on IMDb. Yeah. A 5.3. 5 3. And Ben Affleck won worst actor at the Razzies. Wow. There you go. Yep. So we just, you know, give it up for Ben. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That was also the same year he did uh, uh, Gili. Oh, gosh. If you guys remember I Gili. I remember Gili. That. No? Yeah. You saw Gili, but you didn't see Simon Birch? I, I did see Gili. Jesus. Now you're just embarrassing yourself. This guy, talking about being a fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> I did it for Martin Brest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey baby the uh, movie so across the board 5.3 on imdb it's a 43 percent on rotten tomatoes critics hated it and then even worse than the critics it's a 35 percent audience score yeah so the audience doesn't even like it as much as the critics did no hmm. it's across the board a qualifier for bad movies rule and to say that it, for a while it was kind of like the nickelback of comic book movies Right where it was what? just like fu- <laughs> bougie and and trendy to make fun of Daredevil. Right, uh, like yeah, for a I long suppose. time, Nickelback was like the whipping boy. Like it, like became a meme. It's like, sure. Look at yeah. this Nickelback. blind guy. <laughs> yep, that's right. Mm-hmm. And so for a long time, Daredevil it was just like fun to rip on Daredevil. Huh. Sure. Right, but is it yeah. actually terrible? This is what we're gonna dive into today and see. Well, um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Way to just let the cat out of the bag there, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for uh, Thanks for joining. coming to the we'll show. See you later. Coming to the Cue show. the music. The uh, shortest episode ever. <laughs> Check out our Patreon. A bad movie's <laughs> rule. <laughs> we give you even more seconds um, of time if you subscribe. You'll yeah. get a whole 10 minutes <laughs> yeah. next time. Yeah, look, we appreciate that you guys are listening to us. And look, if, if you haven't uh, yet... We have a Patreon that you can check out, as as Ryan just mentioned. It's patreon.com slash badmoviesrule. And we are a listener-supported podcast. We're ad-free. We're an indie show, and we've got tons of awesome supporters that are on there interacting with us on our Discord or on Patreon, voting on episodes, uh, participating in episodes by giving their awards, which you hear at the end of each of our episodes. And so all kinds of ways to interact and support the show and uh, keep this thing going, help us keep the lights on. We appreciate each and every one of you. The link to that is in the show notes as well. If you, can, if you don't want to write it down, remember patreon.com slash bad movies rule. If you want to reach out to the show, otherwise send us an email, man, because we do these mailbag episodes where you can submit questions. You can tell us stories about movies that you've seen or when you first saw them or your own reviews, or you can correct some of the stupid things that we say on the show, whatever you want to do. Our email is this show is trash at gmail.com and feel free to reach out anytime. We try to at least answer everybody. If not, all of them are going to be on the mailbag. You guys will usually hear back from us. So we appreciate everybody that's out there listening you know what else you can do what else can you do you can send us physical mail oh, and we will open train. it oh, God, man. the last two <laughs> people the, time with the, mail. the last two people that it sent us physical mail i'm really sorry i wasn't here those times yeah so do it this time we'll do it this time That's we're gonna right. be opening some right after this right after on after this camera. next 10 minutes like letter opener <laughs> letter opener exactly. and everything yeah. Boom. that will have been out well before this episode so comes out. i was gonna say if so you're we watching did, this back then, then go back then <laughs> and subscribe when and will then, then be now 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 Seriously. now now all right so let's dive into this thing because we've got a lot to cover with daredevil here and just to give you guys a little bit of a synopsis yeah. so that you don't get lost in the shuffle of this very intricate and complicated plot of this essentially is the story of the origin. You might need a seeing eye dog to get through this. <laughs> you might. Synopsis. It's an origin story, but yet also not an origin story of Daredevil, who is a blind superhero who can see because his other four senses are superhuman because he was robbed of his sight. We're, we're not even to that yet. No. <laughs> Let me know but that's when we what get the, there. The, I have the some synopsis. things. We're yeah. going to get to it really quickly. Uh, yes. And his name is? Matt Murdock. Matt Murdock. That's right. For those of All you right. who don't know. Which, uh, you know. I mean, there may be Stan people. Stan Lee had a... Had a had a knack for naming everybody with alliteration. He, he really liked alliteration. Yeah, Richard yeah. Reed, Bruce Peter Banner. Parker, Bruce Banner. Yeah. I didn't know the meaning of that word. Tony Stark. Wait, mm -hmm. no, no. Um, Steve Rogers. Tony Stark. Close. Oops. <laughs> Steve Rogers. I mean, <laughs> there you, wait he, a he ran out of alliteration, so yeah. he had to start like every other letter <laughs> in the next letter. Yeah, perfect. He reverse alphabeted. It. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway. The movie start now. Were any of you? I guess I want to say this because I, there might be people listening that have never heard of Daredevil before. I, I you never know. It's possible. Had, had any of you were you, you? Let me say that again. Were any of you big Daredevil fans at any point? Had you ever? And maybe not even a big fan, but did you ever come across a Daredevil comic book or had ever saw him in one of the Marvel video games that you played or looked well, anything I, about? I Daredevil? loved reading the Marvel Knights. Yeah. So it was Daredevil, Punisher, mm -hmm. Elektra. Yep. Uh, Blade, mm -hmm. Ghost Rider. So it was like that whole they did Moon Knight. series of them, yeah. Yeah. So I was that was that was where I learned about Daredevil. So you have read some of the comics before. I did, yes. And Ryan, you so. said you didn't really know much about Daredevil. No, I'm I'm not a comic book fan. I like comic book movies, okay. but I don't dabble in any of the hard copies of the So was your first exposure to Daredevil this movie? Was 2003, yes. Wow, and so did you see it in the theaters? I did not see it in theaters, but, you know, it was a big movie yeah. for the time. I mean... You saw it pretty close to when it came out. Absolutely. Rented right. it probably the first week it came out. Right. How old were you yeah. at that time? Uh, what, 15? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. How about yeah. for you, Madela? So, my first experience with any comic book movies or anything, comic book characters, has always been, like, the 2000s era yeah the so aughts not the best the early the early experience yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i remember seeing this it's a damn if, miracle you still like comic books after if that. i didn't see this in theater i saw wow. it in like a, right after it released okay uh on dvd or whatever oh perfect so no one's coming in totally fresh out yeah then. all right yeah i think this is the only dud of like the early aughts the only dud x-men 
X2, Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2. Okay, but Green Lantern's when the aughts, wasn't it? No, Green Lantern was 2011. That was 2011. I'm talking about before that watershed Batman Begins moment. Oh, shut up about Batman Begins. (laughs) Nobody gives a crap about Batman Begins. Batman Begins, Begins, The Punisher, Uh, and then Daredevil. I'm a rich, spoiled white boy. When did The Shadow come out? Do You've seen Shadow, right? With, yes, I mean, Alec this Baldwin. nowhere yeah. resembles anything, Batman. <laughs> oh, it, well, it's 100% it's no. Almost, no, I don't see it. the exact same movie. I don't see it. <laughs> Frank you don't Miller, see it? No. Frank no. Miller got no. hired. You don't see it? You might no. need yourself a... He either was on... He was either on Daredevil and going to Batman, or he switched between the two properties. Frank right. Miller did. Right. And just brought everything he was doing from the one and did it with the other. And so... And, and both of those runs with Frank Miller are considered, like, the... The kind of the iconic the epitome of, of Frank Miller, which they've right. now drawn from since then, right? Yes. And so Frank kind of created the the mythos around a lot of those characters, at least the modern day sensibilities of those characters. Correct. And so, so that's why Daredevil and Batman are very, very similar, is because of Frank Miller. So did Frank walk in the office one day and he's like, "Okay, guys, we're gonna have blind orangs." <laughs> <laughs> if only. All right. What if he was basically the same character, but he was blind? Print the money. If I mean, he was blind as a bat, come on. What if, do you want? Uh, if he was basically the same character, except he came from a poor blue collar background because no. his father was a gangster dock worker <laughs> and he was blinded by acid and then developed height he was and a senses boxer. and yeah. became. But this guy. Yes. But he was working Why don't you at the just docks? ruin the whole front part of this plot synopsis we have to go through? How does his dad <laughs> Just say die? it all. You don't need any help from <laughs> just me. Just say it all. Mark, look, Mark Steven Johnson already did it, so you don't need any help from me. He's <laughs> Louise. All right. How will we For get into Christ's it? For sake. <laughs> Let's get into Let's it. Let's get into the Braille opening right, credits. This isn't Batman. He has sonar. It's not like a bat at all. Wait, yeah. wait, 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 yeah. wait, no. wait. <laughs> hold on. He says radar-like ability. Like okay. Bat. Don't say it. Like a bat. No. Radar. Man. My other senses were heightened. He's like, like a man that has radar bat like sonar. ability. Okay, you mean you have sonar? Good good writing. Good job, guys. <laughs> Thank God they didn't pick a dolphin. A term for <laughs> it. If only there was a term for this radar like oh. ability in which sound waves create an image. <laughs> it's gonna be a six hour episode. Dolphin man. That's <laughs> what we should have had. <laughs> dolphin <Dude. laughs> <laughs> you just gotta toss him a, a grouper every once in a while. Like, wait, that's Aquaman. We can't do that, uh, right? <laughs> we can't copy someone else. All right, so the movie starts in a flash forward. It starts with this iconic Daredevil imagery, right? I mean, anyone seen a, in the front cover of a comic book with Daredevil? I have. Has seen this shot of him wrapped around a cross at sure. the top of a church. I yep. mean, it's like yeah. it's iconic for the character. Yeah, absolutely. And it and it shows him being injured and falling into a church, but we don't find out so much. It's kind of like the John Wick opening, right? Sure. He's starts off super injured. We don't find out till later what the deal right. is and what's going on. Mm-hmm. It goes almost immediately into a flashback, right? And you with, can see... With a great line. J- what's the great line? This they, is a flashback. <laughs> <laughs> they say they say your whole life flashes before your eyes right before you die. Oh, oh yeah. Right. And it's true, even for a blind man. <laughs> I don't think it is. I mean, the first seven years of his life could flash before his eyes, and after that, it's yeah. just a long just black, black that's sequence. A, no, it would be so, a long sonar sequence. <laughs> it's like, it's a lot it's... of wisps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you can tell even from the first shot, right? This guy, okay, it, it's going to be... He, he likes Daredevil a lot, and there's a lot of this stuff pulled straight from the comics, like almost frame for frame right and he absolutely loved it and i i appreciate that about it mm-hmm. and now we you're right we get into this via uh, and our gateway into the flashback is a terrible voiceover from ben affleck yeah like, so we're just going to kind of glaze over that i mean it's just super disinterested and really i mean about as glazed over as his eyes were so right that's true exactly mm-hmm. lazy old lazy eye affleck in this mm-hmm. one really, easy really lazy good. eye affleck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so he basically is getting bullied by these kids at school. Yeah. His dad, as you said, is a famous, well, not famous, maybe used to be famous boxer. Washed up. Washed yeah. up boxer. be the word we're looking for. And so he yeah. lives off yeah. of his glory days. I, I should have been a contender, that whole thing. Yeah, drinking Heineken. The Heineken's in I the kn- bedroom. I knocked that guy out. You like how Heineken sponsored the movie? Well, wouldn't you? I mean, yeah, why not? I'd take a Heineken sponsorship. At, at this point, if you think you're getting on the Spider-Man train, yeah, right, yeah. Throw, mm-hmm. throw Heineken's in the movie for sure. Right. He tells he tells Maddie he's like Maddie you can do anything if you're not afraid setting that seed right for Daredevil who's right. known as the, the man, man with without no fear. fear right right that's his whole catchphrase got it yeah I didn't get that. <laughs> 
And uh, it's hard to see. And we pretty quickly into the flashback <laughs> do get how he was transformed into a superhero. And a lot of this stuff, I, I, I'm kind of tired of origin stories in general because it almost they try to make sense of things that we don't really need made sense of, right? Like, okay, he's a superhero. Let's just start off with him being a superhero, daredevil, and all that stuff, which they did, but. But they didn't, and they did. But they You're didn't, right. Because right. Right. apparently in the present day of the movie, he's been Daredevil for years, it yes. sounds like, at yeah. this point. Well, right? absolutely. Yeah, because so, it cuts yeah. back. It's like, you're, it's like you're in the movie in the right. beginning, right? and then they like go backward right? and then catch you back up at some point in the movie. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So is this where we're going to talk about his... How he how, how he, he becomes, becomes blind. blind? Yeah, so he he basically says one day I decided to <laughs> take a shortcut home, and I'm like through a toxic waste dump. That's what you're gonna yeah, take. Yeah, through the docks. <laughs> yeah, through sure some puddles. <laughs> never you know, never holding his report card. No. By the so way. here's the thing: who has seen the director's cut of the movie? Uh, see, I okay, haven't. let's say it right now. Yeah. I don't want to talk about the director. No, we're not. I just want to know who's seen it. I, I've seen it. Okay. But every time I bring this up to someone, I get. No. Well, but the director's cut. And like this whole movie, we could, we could spend two hours comparing and contrasting. Yeah, we're not going to do about, that. We, we can't talk about two movies at the no. same time. No. So, all right. I was going to bring that up before and I forgot. Thank you. Yeah. But go ahead. Just a matter of yeah. when you we look at how like how choppy the opening is. Yes. And how it's like, well, let's you know establish this real quick and establish this plot point. And it's like, it's funny when you look at the director's cut of most people who know how to make a movie. And it's right. like, well, this is what happens when a studio interferes. Oh, there's tons of studio interference yeah. in this. They they didn't believe in the guy, but they should have never hired him in the first place. No, if you don't they believe shouldn't in have. Him, right? They, they right. shouldn't have. They took a ton of ex- like a ton of convincing. Here's a guy we're gonna give fifty million originally to make this movie. He's done almost nothing. It's a huge effects laden movie. I watched this. There's an hour long documentary on YouTube, the making of behind the scenes, and a lot of it's narrated by him. And he talks about. Just the wire work and all this stuff. He's like, he goes, right. we wasted two days because I didn't know we couldn't do this kind of shot with wires. And like, how much money did those two days cost, Jeez. right? Uh, yeah. On top of everything else. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like, I think the guy loved Daredevil so much, he wanted to cram 20 years of story into two hours, okay? Yep. Which mm-hmm. you can't do unless you got a really deft touch. Mm-hmm. And yeah. he wanted to put all of this in, like this iconography <laughs> from the from the series and all this stuff in there and the guy just bit off too much he just couldn't chew it yeah, yeah. no i mean he's not christopher nolan so oh yeah. good lord I don't know. anyway oh you are a fanboy <laughs> <laughs> all right all right so, so he, cuts, but so, he cuts through the docks oh, yeah go ahead well i was gonna say prior to this though those kids that were beating him up mm-hmm. were making fun of his dad and saying that he worked for this guy fallon yeah right and then that's what starts the whole his son's like comes up to him he's like dad you know yeah. they, they say that you're working for fallon he's right. like, i'm not working for fallon you're crazy right they like he's shaking yeah. down people like right rocky then, balboa right? so then he's like oh yeah and then you know he gets this whole thing and he sees the the his dad roughing up some good guys right. out on the dock and then that's when i need my money yeah, right presumably money. presumably good guys yeah yeah right, we don't know he's making but yeah making him look like he's a bad guy but right so then all of a sudden he's like, hey, Maddie, don't, oh, what are you doing? Don't run away. And yeah. Then that's so when Maddie he runs gets away. pissed and takes off yeah. and takes some plot juice right to his face. Yeah, some okay. plot juice. <laughs> just, not to his face. <laughs> just his eyes. Yeah. Just his eyeballs. He just, just his, manages. It just <laughs> sprayed. Forklift. <laughs> perfectly into the retinas of his eyes. Yeah. So the forklift. Nowhere else. Crashes into a myriad of toxic waste barrels. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Biohazard. Again, not Biohazard a great place barrows. to take a shortcut. No, 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 no. Biohazard waste just sprays everywhere, and sure, it not manages. everywhere. Just in his eyes. No, it sprays everywhere. No, no, just in his we're, eyes. We're talking <laughs> cause and effect here. It sprays everywhere, but it manages to only hit his eyes. <laughs> only his eyes. <laughs> exactly. He's he's like jumping eye for each drop. <laughs> <laughs> he's just trying to catch with each eyelid. Oh, right. I got it. So uh, they do no work to explain that this is some sort of radioactive chemical or a radioactive fork truck bit him, whatever. No, it's it could just, be like rotten pickle juice or something. Just, <laughs> fork truck bit him. It's right? just, <laughs> it's just junk that gets in his eye and blinds him, which right. is like, yeah. that. yeah, that would that, blind you. That's why I call it plot juice. He, he then explains like that. Plot juice. that he has heightened senses. You guys, he's blind. That's it. <laughs> this is offensive to blind oh, people. Oh, no. this is a, okay, this is while, a blind empowerment I will say, movie. I will say it's <laughs> accurately representative of how women are less uh, physically capable than men. 
I'm just saying. Sure. Hot okay. take. Hot wow. take. Here we go. <laughs> but it is offensive <laughs> to blind people. <laughs> Jay, hold on. Hold on. This movie caters to blind people in ways that it absolutely doesn't need to. The opening credits, all the names like Superman, right? Is they did the cool Superman thing in the Christopher Reeves movie. Yeah. This one, they all show up in Braille. Oh, yeah. It's I'm not sure as if the blind person can feel the Braille. The That's TV. what I'm saying. They're like, yeah. oh, yes, I see. Christopher Nolan wrote this. Braille on a TV screen is as useless as Ben Affleck is in this movie, okay? <laughs> yeah, but fun fact. Fun fact that Braille actually spells out this movie's going to suck. Okay. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> it's it's the IMDb ratings. <laughs> it's, it's catered to a blind person in a way it didn't even need to, right? Yes. Well, it also shows it, that blind people can do amazing things. It's That's not right. catering. It's it's being offensive. It's like, hey, guess uh, what? You can't see that I did Braille. <laughs> hey, guys. Two fingers up. It's a really right. cool superhero or a really cool superpower. The kid wakes up in the hospital room. He's got bandages on his eyes. I love this scene. And, He's and not hooked to all anything. All of a sudden, he can hear, he yeah. can hear everything. And he gets this. He, it basically, his superpower allows him to see the world in early 2000s CGI. It's really cool. It's mm, radar-like. Okay. Right, sonar. Sense. Right, the right. radar like sense, which looks cool until they try to render like human people. <laughs> yeah, in the frame like I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> for what it's worth, in two thousand and three, the I effect mean, it's is pretty cool. Good. Yeah, yeah. The, I, I, time. I really yeah. like this it, scene. I'm talking about the, the character models. The, oh yeah, the, the effect I know. is cool. I know, but yeah, imagine if you had to see the world through. Even now, if it was early two thousand CGI, was how you saw the world. <sighs> and then I, my favorite it part is they <laughs> cut to him staring out the window. Yeah. Yeah. Just stoically, with no oh. sight whatsoever. If <laughs> staring out the window is your favorite thing, this is going to be the best movie you've ever seen because there's lots yeah, of lots shots of, staring of out people the, looking out windows. Into the distance. It's always great <laughs> when people do that in movies. And then the dad comes in and he's like, hey, Maddie, <laughs> I'm really sorry about your eyes. That's right. And he's like, oh, it's all right, dad. <laughs> no I harm, no you. foul. I love you. <laughs> right. I love how he has to comfort the dad. And the dad's right. like down on the bed. He's like, it's okay, dad. So there's this little Get montage him. of him Sorry, starting. Sorry, bring back my eyesight, dad. <laughs> there's this little montage of him starting to hone his powers, and he yeah. saves Stan Lee's life yes. on the sidewalk. Yeah. And let him step you know into it, the right? traffic. Yeah. yeah. So that's always great yeah. and fun. Nice parallelism with the shots, you know. And we get back to the bullies. We see the bullies again. Yeah. Because uh -oh. yeah. right? now he's Dewey. blind. Now they really want to stick it to well, him. What's up? What are you blind now? You're such a loser. I yeah. knew you'd go blind. I'll never you. see I this it. coming. <laughs> <laughs> you won't see this coming. <laughs> but Matt's kind of the a hole here, right? Because yeah. they were going to walk away and he attacks them. Yeah. With his uh, CNI with stick. With a weapon. Yeah. Yeah. So. When like, the, who's the good guy in very this close though just <laughs> yeah. a little a little love tap on well, the cheek and then when they're hit when he hits the kid on the face the kid's like uh, 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 uh. you like barely touching him you can tell right. it's just, is that's that right. what you're saying that's yeah probably what you're saying sorry so here's yeah, my like, here's tap, my tap tap, tap tap yeah here's the part that made me laugh right yeah. so like as the movie goes on all of a sudden i revisit into my brain and go to this exact moment and go did these kids ever grow up in Hell's Kitchen with them? Yeah, <laughs> And did exactly. they not know that, like, hey, there's that lawyer kid. He kicked our ass back in the day. Oh, I, I think he's guy. Daredevil. I think he's Daredevil. Throughout the movie, there's all kinds of times of him showing himself to be special in front of people, and he yeah. just doesn't care. He yeah. does nothing oh, to hide Oh, there's the Murdoch kid all. sliding rails again <laughs> through the city, <laughs> doing uh, flips and handstands. Uh, you think that guy's a Daredevil? <laughs> nah. He, he's gonna He's going to show up no, in court he's blind. Daredevil. One day he forgets to take his mask off. Yeah. He's in there with a suit and tie and in court with his Daredevil mask. He's like, Your oh, Honor, crap. since I don't change my voice in character either. <laughs> it's right. like Superman, but like reverse. Yeah. Instead of him just putting on glasses and he becomes somebody different, right. he just has red glasses on and he's completely different. <laughs> Nobody exactly knows who he what is. it is. No, he doesn't have red glasses. That's not him. All right. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to, to wrap up this origin story in the flashback, what ends up happening? So Ace Ventura's landlord asks Matt's dad. <laughs> I heard the animals in there again, Ventura. <laughs> heard them this morning again, scratching around. Yes, Satan. Ventura. Yes. Hey, nice tie-in. Yeah. yeah. So he he tells Matt, because he's Mr. like a- Mr. Dance. He's Fallon, and Fallon is this mob, mob yeah. guy, Ace yeah. Ventura's landlord. And uh, he asks Matt's dad to throw a fight. Matt's dad doesn't want to throw a fight because he's no. a proud, I mean, he's getting back in shape, and now he's fighting again. And uh, so he doesn't throw the fight. And so what do mobsters do when you don't throw the fight? They throw you down a flight of stairs. That's right. And then yeah. you get right. killed. And so the, and kingpin, give flowers. the kingpin kills him, lays the rose whoa, whoa, whoa. on. We don't a know. Mysterious we know that figure. We, the it's audience knows it's kingpin. A mysterious figure with a rose fetish. 
the audience knows immediately that it's Kingpin. <laughs> We're not revealing something that the movie doesn't reveal. Matt is an idiot and doesn't know until the end. Yeah. But he couldn't tell. He couldn't knows see. It's Kingpin. How would he see? <laughs> Beca- well, we want to start getting into the minutia. Right. Also, I don't think roses have thorns in the petals either, because all he does is crush the head of this rose no, and his hand starts no, to No, you don't that, understand. You don't get it. That's it's rose superpower. It's, it's rose. You get superpower to squeeze jelly from roses. No, no, That's it's he rose squeezes the red out of it. He's like, yeah, the red. He's it's just, just a white out. rose after. <laughs> He yeah, straight he up grabs it. it. He's so pissed, he yeah. squeezes the red right out of his mouth. Yeah, that's what it was, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. squeezing oh. the juice out. And <laughs> also, his dad's a boxer. Yes. Two thugs. I thought that was all you had. Two to thugs okay. punching him for <laughs> maybe 17 punches yeah, kills you know this what? guy. I know he was out. You know, Why that was kind of a pussy. just shot him. I would have just uh, made more sense. You know what? He won't be able to handle some face punches. Right. He's this, never had that happen. This guy who's uh, uh, making a comeback boxer, let's just uh, jump him and fight him with our fists. Not only that, but else. that's, yeah. that's yeah. dad's whole yeah. reputation was that he could take a beating. Yeah. yeah. John the Devil. And that he right? just would just yeah. never go down. John the Devil Murdoch. Apparently that so, was wrong. He just gave up. Maybe maybe he's still alive. <laughs> maybe he just didn't want to take care of his blind kid. He got up. Oh he's like, God. He got up. He's like, oh, man, I'm out of this. Now I don't have to take yeah. care of this. I pretend to be dead for a little bit. Hold my breath. <laughs> Uh, and man, his dad never knew that beating. he had these powers. No, he moved ever. to Oregon. <laughs> his dad didn't know at all no. that he had any sort of special powers. Oh. Right. All right. Now we're back in present. Anyway, he's like, okay, so I'm a superhero. Now I will use my powers of good to fight evil in the, the Denzians of Hell's Kitchen or yeah, whatever. Yeah, and yeah. This little speech. Yeah. And so we cut back to, to modern day, and Ben Affleck is in a sensory deprivation tank. Yep. Right? Which is. Taking a nap. Quiet himself because the man can literally perceive everything that's going on from Sound. blocks and blocks and right. blocks away. He looks dead. Yeah. He's with his blue eye, his like pale blue eyes. Yes. Right. And so he gets out into his the most obvious superhero layer Lair. apartment yeah. yes. of all. That's why um, he doesn't want to have women over there. <laughs> they'd be like, Are you a superhero? Yeah, immediately they'd come in and be like, Oh, okay. They're just You're feeling Daredevil. around. <laughs> Okay, either you're going to put on a gimp suit or you're a superhero. <laughs> Seriously. Maybe like, would it kill you to throw a rug down, man? <laughs> There's <laughs> a lot done. of concrete in here. <laughs> Don't you get cold? Ridiculous. <laughs> These, like, gothic statues. There's one got, like, a hand, like this boob in its hand of this other statue, yeah. like, cradling it. Yeah, but, yeah it's, it's like, like I call this the sex dungeon. That's right. It kind of looks like one. <laughs> I didn't, so I didn't decorate. Heather, I don't know. Later on, you get Heather on the answer machine. like, how come you've never let me see your place? We're breaking up. This is so ridiculous. Like, I know. Months, every time we sleep man. together, every time we sleep together, you just disappear at 3 a.m. Yeah. Where do you go? You don't think he's Daredevil, do you? <laughs> I was just gonna I'm say. like, I know why you haven't seen his place, Heather. He's never seen his place, Heather. He's never seen, he's his, never place, seen his place. <laughs> there, there's no seven. one can ever see it. <laughs> there's seven Daredevil clubs hanging up on the coat rack. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. They're you like chimes. Like, he'd have to clean all that crap up. Who's the contractor, man? <laughs> right. Who did he have do this? And he, again, you know, he did. he's blue collar. <laughs> At least Batman had enough money to yeah. afford to hire people and then That's kill them. Up. What yes. does Daredevil do? That's one of his superpowers is now he, he can sew really well. He doesn't even get paid as a lawyer. He takes free cases. Yeah. 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 He's a, a pro bono lawyer. <sighs> all right. Let's he should have had like newspapers sewn together for his suit. <laughs> and how did he get the DD on there? In the... Yeah. Uh, in the court, so we see him. We That's see the DD action. you're questioning. No, no, well, we'll get to that <laughs> right now. Don't do not. When they first make the <laughs> when they first make the suit, he's like not double D's. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anyway. All right, so first time we see Matt Murdock in action in the, in the courtroom, okay? He's a lawyer. He's in there with John Favreau, who's playing Foggy Nelson. And Matt is cross-examining this guy, Mr. Quesada, okay? Mr. Quesada is, seems to be some kind of low-level, you know, thug in Hell's Kitchen. And he had sexually assaulted this woman who Matt and Foggy are representing. And it's not going super well because— You want to know why it's not going super well? Yeah, tell me. Because Matt wants to throw the case out. You think he wants to? He wants to. Throw he wants to go. He wants to go serve his own justice. No one's ever going to hire him if he loses every case. That's why he does it for free. Oh, uh, finds uh, poor people that can't. I'm saying he's okay. not a good guy. Okay. <laughs> he he's just wants to guy. find poor people. Is that what it is? And then get their cases thrown out, and then go beat people up. 
Because he says things in court that I'm pretty sure you can't. I hope we, justice is found today before justice finds you. And the judge is like, you know, that's weird. I did a case the other day. I think this guy's daredevil. <laughs> I did a case the other day, and the, the guy got acquitted, and then he was found dead from daredevil. I just want the other lawyer to be like, uh, objection? <laughs> Threatening my witness? I, yeah. I don't think that that's something that you could say, but that's cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, he basically hears his heartbeat. And knows, knows that he's, he's lying. lying. Yeah. That's another superpower he's got. He's a human lie detector, which is yeah. pretty awesome. He, he can, can only hear stuff. heartbeats when it serves the plot, though. Yeah, true. For sure. Because right, right. there's lots of other times people lie to him, and he doesn't notice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also. Uh, well, so, there's probably other things going on, like bells trains. ringing, and trains, and <laughs> right. loud noises that right. make him screech to a halt and no, just can't see things. That would be things. his entire life. So like, what you're saying is his superpower only works when the plot needs it to work. He still exactly. needs a kryptonite. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So Foggy yeah. asks him if he wants Trains to go get his a... kryptonite. Foggy asks him if he wants to go get a beer and he says, no, I've got work to do. Cue stuntman to twirl the sticks around and then... <laughs> A CGI. Chop, 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 right. chop. That was totally not Ben yeah. Affleck, by no, the way. You can, no. that's the, the, not the CGI same job. whipping yeah. coming yeah. out. When he was whipping, the mask <laughs> yes. was moving <laughs> like right. this up and down, up and down, down his down. face. And then it cuts to like this CGI romp through the city. Gear yes. up. It's a gear up montage. And I, when I say CGI romp, I mean the character model is computer. The city itself is rendered on the computer. Yes. Not one thing on screen is real. Sure. It's GameCube. Like Tobey Maguire's <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, exactly. But not as good. Right. Like just less not as well I think done. that's why <laughs> they, it kind of worked Much in their less favor than... <laughs> to have a darker movie. That's they should less have to render and hide it. But also, yeah. I feel like even in some of the shots of Maguire, the city is real. Like they right. filmed right. the Because right. I remember they were swinging cameras on cranes and, and stuff like right. that. Right, yeah. And then they put him in. In this case, even the city's not real. No, because the skyline isn't even accurate, really. They shot in L.A. They had one yeah. little downtown area where they put up some water towers to make it look like rooftops in New York. Right. But they mm -hmm. didn't even go to New York except no. for like two or three shots from Times Square and stuff like that. Yep. Is it that really was that it. dark in that part of New York? And the Chrysler building is like in every shot, but the Empire State Building you can't see? No. Yeah. It's go to New York. It's an $80 million movie. Tax tax breaks, man. All right. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> I don't know enough to laugh at that. He's <laughs> he's tracking down. He's tracking down. No one uh, shoots in New York. After he runs through Computer City, USA, he goes to uh, this bar where Caseda is hanging out. He's going to track yeah. down. That yeah. yeah, like a biker bar. He's right? on the outside, which I yeah. wasn't a great edit because he's on the outside just chilling. But then they and see then him some guy goes, hey. There's some guy up there. Hey, look at the guy in the there. He's just yes. in the bar yeah. up in the corner. And all of a sudden, now he's crouching in the bar. So now yeah. you, you're like, okay, well, he obviously got in there somehow. Somehow. But he's in the ceiling. Through a window. Yeah, one of those rooftop windows. <laughs> it crawls in. Oh, I was just going to say, his <laughs> shoulder goes like, like ah. a squeak of the window. Just Rolling around. <laughs> is this, he goes, is this guy for real? And Caseta is like, yeah, man, is he's for real. What do you want, man? Justice. Thank you. <laughs> And then cue the first big fight scene of the yeah. movie in this bar where people are sh just shooting guns at yes. him. Yes. Yep. And he not hit ever. It doesn't even show him dodging. No. Nope. I mean, it shows he can see the bullets in his sonar, but at no point is he ever like flipping moving around, out moving of the way. out of the way, nothing. Uh, except for the one point where he flips back up onto the rail and mm -hmm. then runs and, and then runs kicks up. some people and stuff like yeah, that. He yeah. Only... But he kills everybody. <laughs> yeah. But the one guy he wants to kill. <laughs> Well, he lets he him go. He does else. that a lot. You gotta yeah. let he him likes go. To hunt them down. Yeah. All right. It's, he's All like right. a cat with a mouse, and he catches him. And he's like, "Aw, you know, now I can't chase you anymore." Yeah. The intricacies of the scene aside, who likes the scene? I, I enjoyed it still. This fight I, scene was. was there were was, aspects it was, of it. The fun, problem is fun scene to watch. The problem is most of the fight scenes are filmed in com confusio vision. Right. You, yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Where it's just like, what is happening? This is for me. This is like the confusio vision, and like you said, like the the editing of everything. It's you know, yeah. like people are shooting at him every which way with machine guns. Right. And yeah, it's it's weird, but yeah. I really like this scene. Yeah, I don't hate it. I look. Yeah. I like. I love how the sound bed is with the gunshots and how it doesn't. It's not just like the typical like. No, like, that right. was all get, like, great. Boom, boom, boom. And yeah. like his Mark has moments yeah. because of his love of Daredevil, where he puts in these great imagery, like of the flaming pool table. Yes, right. Silhouetted mm -hmm. against that. Was that. And I'm like, 
these are fantastic, but then there's always these little extra things that makes me go, oh, if you just had not, like, I know I'm getting nitpicky here, but when he's on top of the ceiling fans, which by the, I think Eric that wrote it. That is a strong yes, ceiling fan strong I've ever seen in my fan. life. It's like blocking bullets and stuff too. And Eric uh, wrote in, he was like, are those made out of adamantium, the yeah. ceiling fans? Yeah. The <laughs> but then he, to jump from one to the other, yeah. Mm-hmm. He couldn't just jump. He does like this inverted flip to go right. like a foot. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yes. And I'm like, just, he just goes a little extra. He does that. Yeah. There's, there's quite a few scenes where he like will flip. I don't know. Then it's just not. I think this is the cleanest fight scene of the movie. It is, yeah. which is saying something. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm getting nitpicky. Here. But why are the pool tables on fire? Because he's Daredevil and he's got to look they, cool. They he has people be. that come with him and light things on fire so that at the end he can pose. So I he can see. be like, welcome <laughs> to hell. Just check it. Okay. Just, Hell's Kitchen is on fire. What right. you don't know is Karen Page actually follows him around because we only see Ellen Pompeo in like one scene. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Who we all would know from the lady from Grey's Anatomy, right? Mm-hmm. Was Karen Page, who had a big part in the in the Daredevil TV series. Right. But Karen Page, is the receptionist at the law office, is very, very... It's a tiny part in this yes. movie, right? I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, your ears must be ringing. Yeah, she right. says exactly. <laughs> but no, so he. I, I thought it was a fine scene, and I, again, if it was everything is so dark, it everything is. is shot so shaky, and mm. I just want to be able to see what's going on. So he hunts yeah. this guy yeah. down to the subway. He takes him down to the subway because again, he gets away. Everyone else is dead, but this guy gets away. Yeah. And he does discover his his only weakness, which is trains, noises, <laughs> trains. loud noises, just like trains. noises. I'm like Matt grew up in New York, right? He's been on the subway before. He, he <laughs> yeah. acts surprised uh, when a train goes he by. He just stays out of the subways. <laughs> only, like, oh, only, wait a minute, only yeah, he learned trains. that as a kid. Like <laughs> only certain trains. It's like when they first get into the subway and he's yeah. hiding behind the you know the pylon, mm-hmm. and he comes down the stairs and the the train comes by and, and Ben Affleck does that like. Uh, yeah, so he's pooping. Constipation, uh, and yeah. then he has to like hit his, you know, his wand against the the metal grate to create, grate the, sonar to create the sonar. His daredevil stick, yeah. exactly. His daredevil his stick. Wand. His club. What is he? Harry Potter? I'm yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, I can see. It's his Billy Club. It's a Billy Club. Billy Whatever. Club. It transforms into a lot of things. Yes. Yeah. Well, it depends but on which one he has. But it's yeah. a Billy Club. But Ryan. you basically okay. Fine. We'll go with Billy Club. <laughs> Whatever. It's Whatever. Daredevil Club. It's What's his, your point? It's my point is that <laughs> once again it's back to this like specific crap of like, yeah. okay, so this train is driving by right now. And also <laughs> Cuts there, perfectly tell in me half. this. Yeah. Why were there so many trains going through this subway and no one was even there to take them? That's a good point. That's a good point. Because Daredevil, I think, closed the door behind him. Is that what happened? Down there. <laughs> they were just like, we're just going to, you know. He closed the gate. The L train. <laughs> Sorry. And the C train. And any the E tickets. train. And we don't stop. There, there's like, no, <laughs> there's literally like three trains that go through the station in two minutes. Yeah. But well, and I love that he ignores it. So, yeah. you know, the, there's the fight. Yes. He ends up on the tracks. Yes. He's, he, oh, my back. I can't get up. Right. He and Daredevil literally crouches down and he goes, you hear that? That's the C train. Yeah, that light. Yeah, I'm sorry. One just went past you. Uh huh. This one's coming. Is it too far away so it's not hurting your ears? No. Or are you able to turn it off, and you just aren't able to focus? No. Now that now that justice has been served, Mm -hmm. the train does not bother him anymore. Look, guys, when you have a cool (laughs) send off phrase, you got to say to a bad guy right before you murder him, you got to just block it all out. Yeah. Bite your lip and tough it out. Yeah. And you just say. Justice has been served. Just act like it's not bothering you. Yeah. Like you're trying to act like you're not drunk when you are. Yeah. yeah. So it he just got work. to that point. <laughs> just got uh, like, to that the point. first, the first train bothered him. Then the second train almost got him shot in the That's head. It is. So now that the third train's coming by, it's just like, well, you know what? I don't. It doesn't bother me anymore. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. good. No. I got it. And so I got I'm good, that. man. But then that train only cuts him perfectly in half. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. like splatter him or anything. Doesn't disfigure him other than just. Perfectly cuts him right now. No, that's the beauty about killing people on the subway. I don't know if you've ever done it, but no. it's it's very clean and efficient. Yeah, nice. they actually make yeah, the yeah. wheels out of razor blades. Yeah, so, right. So right. Just you can still identify the guy though. You can yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. because they well, gotta know it was perfectly in half. The best part of the scene, Ben Yurick shows up. Ben Yurick is a character in the Daredevil comics who's like the reporter, right? He's the he's the guy that is the Vicky Vale. I was to gonna track say down Vicky Daredevil. Bale. I mean, or the yeah. right. if you were comparing it to Batman, which right. we are. <laughs> um, it is. And and he's the one that's like, Daredevil's real. And the cops are like, shut up. Stop writing about the stupid thing that clearly doesn't exist. Yeah. And so he's like, oh, Daredevil, I nothing to do this. And he takes his cigarette and he tosses it on the ground. And there it lights up these perfectly 
like drawn on the ground in yeah. lighter fluid or whatever, these two double Ds. It would have had to have been gasoline. Or, or gasoline. It would whatever. have had to have been gasoline. Regardless. Yeah. And it's a re- and the shot itself is dope as Really hell. cool. It's awesome. Especially people that have re- uh-huh. or read Daredevil comics. Sure. It's mm-hmm. awesome. I've yeah. got a question. But I have a thousand questions <laughs> about this. How many <laughs> DDs are on the ground at different crime scenes that weren't caught? <laughs> that just That's went unnoticed. <laughs> just, nobody knows. I just pictured Daredevil. It was Daredevil. like five days later, all of a sudden, this is, <laughs> oh. The fire department's oh, like, we've had a what? rash of fires lately. When was Daredevil here? I think he shut the gate. I think he's down there after he kills this guy, meticulously drawing. Oh, crap. I messed up. You know, he's down there trying to get it just right. People Put trying to come down there. Down. Down. Don't come down here. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Don't come down here. He's just hitting this billy club. I guess that's what he can see. It's just kind of like, bong. Right. I'm serving uh, justice. How long was he bong. down there? How long was he down there drawing these freaking Ds? And they're big. And they're yeah. huge. Yeah. Getting them perfect. He's like, perfectly symmetrical. <laughs> what, so if he, what if there was like 18 of them down there and he only hit the one? Right. He's like, right. oh, I hope he throws a cigarette right here. This right. is perfect. I would have loved if he hit it and there was like 18 different Ds, but like some. <laughs> Or messed scribbly up. and messed up. <laughs> like Shots an like actual this are so blind person. Out. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I this I know you said it was dope. I can't stand stuff like this in movies. Why? It's stupid. But it's a, but this is it's acceptable very in one cool, movie. Tell me. The crow. Oh, why is that acceptable? Because it's dope as fuck in the crow. Okay, well then, what's the difference? Because it's the same thing. Because <laughs> Eric Draven, because Eric Draven can see. Daredevil did this way before the it's crow. A, it's like wait, the crow stole it from Daredevil. That's right. We have our sequence wrong. This is why he brought him down there. He took the time ahead of time. <laughs> oh, he, that's what he did he before he went into the bar. He had pre-planned he was going to go to this and I'll subway. Drag him down here. <laughs> He's got them all over the he's city. Like, he's no, like, all right. Not I that one. The 52nd him. Street Station. <laughs> Damn it. I drew the D down there. <laughs> I got to wait till he goes to the other one. <laughs> I gotta get, he gets on the train. This is actually 72 yeah. hours later. He's been chasing him the whole time. Right. For him to be in the right spot. All right. Finally. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. I'm going to kill you right here. Shots like this ruin movies for me. Yes. Like at the end of The Punisher mm-hmm. when he has John Travolta dragged in the car lot and all the cars explode and then yeah. it cuts to the bird's eye view of the Punisher skull that in was exploded dope cars. AF too. Oh, so dumb. It was pretty cool. So dumb. That ruined the movie for me. You know the, the Yeah, but planning? you know Michael Keaton flying his his bat wing in front of the the moon. Right. Like, oh, that's for no one. Yeah, no, that was a completely oh. superfluous <laughs> moon flyby. <laughs> wow. Superfluous. What'd all you right. say? Superfluous. <laughs> All right, so we're back to the apartment. This is when Heather's calling, saying, I want to see your place. You never show me. I'm breaking up with you, all that. And uh, Every time we sleep together. Yeah. <laughs> Matt starts, I'm like, oh, I wonder why you can't have no why more relations. Why did you even listen to the whole thing? Just, I would have been like, click. <laughs> I, I, I don't need I, that I, guilt. Right, like, this is Heather, I'm breaking up with you. I just got done killing a bad guy. All right, well, I'm done with you anyway. That's if all you, I needed to hear. If you wonder why he can't have normal relationships, maybe the fact that he starts popping oxy like they're sweet tarts out of his... Oh, yeah. Out of his... About about and popping teeth out of his mouth. I, seriously, all that stuff. I'm like, there might... Maybe he's got an opioid problem, I think, yeah, possibly. He could only do that 32 times. I mean, then he's going to just be like gangly mouth, you know? Right. <laughs> Yeah, like, daredevil. <laughs> I got a box of chicklets for a mouth. Wait, that's why Batman talks like that. That's right. Yep. Where are my teeth? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so we go to the coffee shop. This is where he's hanging out. He's now back to being mild mannered Matt Murdock and uh, John nice. Favreau. Oh, I love Very your alliteration. Nice. Mild mannered yeah. Matt Murdock. Yep. And uh, mm-hmm. putting mustard in his coffee. John Favreau will never ever change, and I love it. He's always exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. He's just he's happy doing Hogan. His John Favreau. Th- well, he, Happy Hogan is just John Favreau. Yeah. Like right. that's yeah. how he is. Mm-hmm. It's his sense of humor, and I love it. And it's like even back then, he was still doing his thing. Yeah. Totally cool, joking around about alligators in the sewer and yep. and and all this stuff. These and are real, Matt. These are real. The, <laughs> that's right. It is. It's refreshing. Yeah. Yes. He does like since swingers. Right. He's you know, just always been like, that way. That's John Favreau. Yeah. And one of okay. Daredevil's underrated powers is that he can smell how hot a chick is from about a block away. Right? I have questions. Right. <laughs> 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 he hears the weight ratio. <laughs> is that what he does? He hears the sidewalk <laughs> and he smells her. He's like, <laughs> 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 because he immediately perks up and Favreau's like, Where? He goes, Not yet. Like not yet. it's coming. 
And then it comes Jennifer Garner around the corner. And well, he smells rosewood or whatever it is. Whatever it was. Instead of Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, this one smells know. like con- con- country fried steak. Yeah. She didn't eat a lot of butter this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear it on your heart. Oh, my God. It's, like, it's, it's, probably probably like, it's their hearts. Yeah, that's what he thinks <laughs> is beautiful. <laughs> 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 yeah. It just sounds like oil draining <laughs> from a canister. Your LDL is a little high there, girl. <laughs> this one's great. She's got great hair. <laughs> Not you can yet. Smell the hair <laughs> now. And now. then she walks through the door. Uh, she walks, and he's like, "She looks hideous." <laughs> and she must have brought her own coffee with her. Yeah. yeah. She comes in, sits down. Matt goes up to flirt with her, and she leaves immediately. Like not enough time to have gotten a coffee or right. anything or do anything, but she's got one. Yeah. When she goes out, whatever. It's Wait obvious they've chopped things. You up. mean something is stupid in this movie? Yeah. There's tons of that uh-huh. one thing. Maybe. That they one just they chop yeah. up like crazy, right? The scene with him and John Favre is more important than the whole meet cute with Jennifer Garner. Right. This and is their meet. The meet yeah. cute. That's that's awesome. what it's called. Yeah. yeah it no, is. I just I forget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so she leaves because she doesn't realize he's blind. They have this little cute flirty moment. Yeah, yeah. Excuse she, me, where's the honey? It's right in front of you. Oh, uh, yeah. She's could you be such more specific? a jerk to him. What are you blind? blind? Yeah. yeah, I am. Can you? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Friend I didn't of yours? realize. Let me hand you <laughs> yeah. this honey. There's, there's a couple of. Them. Hi, he, my name's Matt Murdock. He follows her outside and uh, stalks her. Stalks her to give you my name. A Dogs playground, her right? To a playground. And she's acting her character, I couldn't really get a handle on Electra as a character. Yeah. Like she's just weird. She was weird in the coffee house and then here she's like I don't like being followed. I think he grabs talked, her wrist. I don't like being touched. I, think I don't talked. like you blind people looking at me. Whatever, you know. <laughs> I don't like you. I don't like people. blind people looking Not at me. Not looking good. at yeah. me. <laughs> I don't like your really red hair dye in this scene, but not in any other scene in the movie. Yeah, and I don't know if, if it's the shape of his sunglasses or that terrible hairdo or whatever, but he, Ben, who doesn't usually look ridiculous, oh, looks yeah. ridiculous in this movie. It, his hair looks In this bad. particular He's scene. He's blind. Yeah. He no, how do you expect him to fix his hair? Even, even... I just want to know why it's red in this scene. Even a blind squirrel can fix their hair. And then it's way red in this don't scene. Don't tell Charles. Yeah. For sure. Okay, but... Go ahead, sorry. She's autistic. That's what's going on. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Electra? <laughs> she does... She, why why I don't do you like think to, she's autistic? I don't like to be touched. I don't like you looking at me. She has sensory oh, issues. She has sensory. I was just going to say, she's, she's on like, the spectrum. Ah, I can't believe you said That's she's why got, she's hanging out in the playground. <laughs> I don't think she's got the tism, honestly. The she beat tism? it as a child. Yeah, wow. is that what it was? Okay, have you seen Catwoman? That's Woman? a hot take. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen Catwoman? Any of you? Yeah, oh, you no, mean the Halle, Halle Berry, Berry classic? Yes. Yeah. The, the shaky movie movie? Yeah. Who doesn't love Which that movie? Which one came out first, this or that? This. Daredevil came out Daredevil. before Catwoman. Okay, so yeah. Catwoman copied the fight scene with the awkward That's also ogling Batman. the booty and then looking at the kids like, ah? Well, uh-huh. look. If there is a more cringe fight scene in a movie, it's I don't know Cat what Woman it is. One. It's the Catwoman one. Is it? Yeah. Do a side by side. One? Catwoman, way worse. Way than, worse. Yeah. Because to mm-hmm. me, because I never seen Catwoman, I I don't I couldn't think of a cringier fight scene ever in a movie. Oh yeah, well, no, like, this, this one sucks. This is where it becomes like a kids movie. It this is, is a fight. I, I mean, they're fighting. No, but this I'm saying Catwoman. I'm saying Fox did this like weird. Where it was like, okay, so we want to have a cool comic book movie, but we also want kids to enjoy it, but right. we also want adults to enjoy it. But so let's for? fight on a playground, but who's and all the for? kids are rooting them on. Yeah, fight, fight, no, fight. Yeah, even a kid's not going to enjoy this scene. Yeah. I, like, I don't know. My six-year-old daughter thought it was funny. I was going to say, I thought it was cool when I was 15. What was the matter with I, you? I thought it was cool when I was 13. Yeah. So you thought this scene was cool? I remember sitting in that. I was 23 years old. You, well, you were 23, 23, though. That's and I remember probably sitting in the scene off. going, this ruined the entire tone of the movie. Up to this point, it's dark. It's brooding. James, it's cool. you were not it's, a child at the time. I didn't say I was a child. But you're saying you don't get it. That's There's true. You the, don't. Because you weren't a child. We were children I at just, the time. There's just a we cutoff. It. It's the cutoff we're of... We're one now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh it's no! They the formed off. into one Ryan, <laughs> a super Ryan, Uno Ryan, Ryan. Square. It's, we, so the whole we need thing Mueller. Is Where's Mueller? Ridiculous! He's they, they're doing this thing. They're doing all these wire jumps, and I we could just talk about that now too. They they're used bad. wire work throughout this entire movie, and wire work 
in, in made popular in the Matrix a few years before right. this, right? Very but that Peter was Panish. done really well in the Matrix right. because they used it in spots where they needed it and in places where they knew it would look good. They just used it for everything in this movie, even if they had to jump two feet. They did it on uh, wires. When yeah. he went, like, got out of bed in the morning. And there's, like, this distinct look to it <laughs> that I hate it. Yeah. yeah. I hate it. The the blatant choreograph like moments between Garner and Affleck, yes. they drive me nuts. Like yeah. you could see that as they're performing them, they're almost like they don't even believe it themselves. No, right. and it's terrible. We're balancing on the seesaw. Yeah. So we're on the seesaw. Now uh-huh. we're balancing on both the seesaw. And I'm, Affleck's right. little cheeky freaking smile throughout that this entire nuts. scene. Yeah, and when he throws the uh. the, the 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 another tone breaker it, when he throws the the. The blind person rod, what are those the the, the stick, the walking the stick. stick. Sure, he yeah. throws the walking stick in the air for like ten seconds. And it's throws up there, the coat yes. off. and then yeah, he yeah, does yeah. the stupid little pose and catches it. Uh-huh. Yeah, like he's fencing, standing there like an idiot. Like right there, you're like, oh. she would know. She'd be like, you're daredevil, aren't I, you? That's, that's just what I'm talking <laughs> about. Yeah. He does this right in front of her. Yep. And it makes her look like an idiot. Yeah. yeah. It does her character dirty because the next scene, they're walking on the street and she goes, how can you do this? He's like, well, I grew up in Hell's Kitchen, so you learn to take care of yourself. And she goes like, that checks out. I'm a moron. And she's been trained by this like- This whole movie that does Electra dirty? I'm just saying. Yeah, it does. She, but she tells him that she had a new like sensei or whatever every year. So she has all this training and she just got her Which ass handed to her by, by a far blind more guy. more than what he's right. got. Right. Yeah. He's not only not doing anything to hide the fact that he's Daredevil, he might as well have just been like, I'm Daredevil. Right. Right. Psst. And if you question. can't figure it out and you don't have her get it right away- it makes her look like the biggest idiot of yeah. all time. It's not fair to that well, character. Well, it doesn't even stop. She right. almost steps in a puddle. <laughs> I was going to say, it doesn't and he, stop yeah, there. And then he's like, <laughs> he's like, oh, you know, she's like, like that. How do you do that? You know, right. and then he's like, by the way, you're six weeks late for your last period. And they're doing this, <laughs> <laughs> they're doing this fight. See, they're balancing on the side and they look over and I love the, I do love the kid on the swing set that's just looking at all this going, this is some shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. Right. yeah. Like, at least one of the kids was like, okay. And yeah. then all the kids you know, in the background at the basketball like it was court. Normal. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Sean, so Sean McHugh is one of the guys that wrote in. He did say about this. He goes, during the scene where Electra and Daryl fight in the playground, I looked at my wife and commented on how this scene destroys the tone. She looked at me and said, wait, it's not supposed to be this cheesy? Like, she just <laughs> assumed this is what they were going for. And it, it, it wasn't. If yeah. you if you knew what Mark uh, Mark uh, Stephen Johnson Stephen Mark Johnson Mark right Stephen Mark jo- Stephen Johnson whatever Stephen Johnson. if you know what the Johnson was trying to do okay you would know that's not at all that like cheesy fun kids movie is not at all what he was trying to do yeah not at all Why well and that's where I feel that? like the, well, the studio steps in because yeah. they're like well we want to make a kids movie right and not I mean to, that was that was that's been the fight I think from day one for every superhero ugh. movie. But couldn't he have shot it so it wasn't so light? Well, yes. He could have you shot know? it. So the fault also lies with him because he could have shot it to not look ridiculous with the wires. And right. they could have had a really cool fight scene if you really – I mean, playground. I think it's dumb sure. to fight her anyway because, again, it reveals too much about himself. He should have let her kick his ass. Right. And but, then be like, wow, you just beat up a blind guy. Or maybe do one thing that could maybe be passed off as like, <laughs> oh, babe, did I really just see that? You know what? That's kind of weird. You know what? Right. You caught they, the one punch. They just d- shouldn't have made it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The movie? The whole movie. You shouldn't have made it. <laughs> she does finally give her give her name. She says, my name is Electra Nachos. Yeah, and, Nachos. Uh, All right. You should see what you got to do uh, to get my phone number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. Boom. You got to kill three guys. All right. That's it. <laughs> Cuts to cuts to Fisk Tower. That's right. We finally get to meet Kingpin, played by Michael Clark Duncan. His eyes, who's only comfortable talking to people while staring out on the CGI city with a cigar in his mouth. Talk about again looking out, out, out the of, windows, yeah. which he smokes excessively. Yeah, uh, who well, takes three hits of a cigar in ten seconds? That's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. His throat. I well, mean, that, I like that was Fisk. I like in that was a big thing always in the comic yeah. book. He'd be like, he'd be like. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I, I like a good cigar, but give me they would three write, times they would write seconds? his say bubbles in his cigar smoke a lot of the times. In nobody the likes comic books. Nobody likes staring out the window broodingly more than him, though. James, except bad guys <laughs> in every like, movie ever. <laughs> he looks like your retarded cat. I'm sorry, I'm, <laughs> but your cat is like, <laughs> his cat's like actually special. It is, but, but yeah. his cat's eyes like always seeping. That's what he looks like. It looks he like is. he's gonna be crying. Like I think he didn't yeah. like the cigar. Maybe, maybe his he's eyes like, were super watery. That's why he kept smoking. He's like, it's just gonna get better. I will say that I know we like <laughs> to joke around. I get used to it. 
It's a trope. I mean, <laughs> for sure. Bad guy stares ominously out window while smoking. And he does it in every stinking scene. He's yeah. in yes. that room. Constantly. But all joking aside, I love Michael Clark Duncan in yeah. this role. Oh, oh yeah. Good. yeah. He's Kingpin. Mm-hmm. He did good. Did you yes. like him? Yeah. See, I will say, as far as this goes, yeah. I love him as, yeah. as Fisk. Yeah. Constantly... I, I like wanted more. Yeah. I wanted more of him on the screen. You gotcha. know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, Kingpin's got problems. I gotta we gotta start hitting the gas here as we're an hour in and we're not even a quarter way through the movie. Um we meet Kingpin here and he basically's got some problems with Daddy Nachos, which is Electra's dad. And so he's like, Call Bullseye. We gotta get Bullseye in here to take care of Daddy Nacho. Yeah, he wants to set him up as be like people thinking that guy's that the he's the kingpin. Well, right. that's the first introduction that people right. are talking because Kingpin is now in the news. Right, exactly. Which, so we right. yeah. cut across the pond to Ireland where we see Bullseye in a pub. Yeah. Oh shooting darts <laughs> and bullseye's superpower for those of you who aren't familiar with the comic books is that he never misses right that he literally doesn't even have to look he can throw something and hit exactly anything what he's aiming for. literally anything. anything could be a any, paper clip a paper clip it clearly could be, uh a playing card we see at one yep. point yep. could be a peanut piece of glass a peanut all yeah. kinds yeah. of stuff the man never misses he can also snort cocaine out of a stripper's butthole <laughs> Because that's what Colin hey, Farrell must have I was done for say, every scene. Colin Farrell probably has that. Where did he get all the point. extra paper, paper clips, too, to jam in that dude's throat? I don't know. How many know. paper clips does he just keep he on just, his person? Like, yeah. Eight or something. He's got in his pocket anytime he needs to throw them, like and ninja he, stars. And does he pre-straighten them? I, I'm going to guess. No, no. He showed him the paper clip, and then he was like, Whoa. Right, but, yeah, but then that after was that, one. he threw him so quickly, he had to have pre-straightened the rest of them. He's got a yeah. bunch of, like, up, but, up his sleeve. Or did he, right? did he like, break that one as he was throwing it? Like, 16 like, times. Yeah, like he just kept breaking it down the down the little bed lines. And they lines. couldn't animate that but, but he's like, because yeah. it was 2003. <laughs> he, he, fires him, <laughs> he fires him into the guy's neck. But, uh, yeah, Colin Farrell was dialed to 11 on this movie. I'll tell he you. He was so intense. Yeah. The, yeah. This, another scene that kind of like you go up and it's like you have all these like weird crappy scenes and then there's like, oh, wait, right. now we got Bullseye intro. Right. I love this scene. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, you good. got House of Pain in the background. Yeah. You know? Yes. Yep. And you get Colin Farrell the first time he'd ever used his native accent in a movie. That's also yeah. true. Yeah, that's because right. Because he mm-hmm. he was Irish, and he'd right. never played an Irish guy before. This. Not so. not in America. He's yeah. Irish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's his. That's real, how he, he talks. has a thick accent like that's that. That's how he, he talks. Really thick yeah, I have yeah. no idea. Yeah. Just being himself. Yeah. And so, and then it cuts to the next scene where he's now flying over. He gets the call. He's flying over to America, essentially. Oh, I love and that. And he sits scene. next to an old lady who just won't shut up, even though he can. He's got his headphones in and can't really hear what she's saying. Blasting heavy metal. Blasting heavy metal. Yeah. And he ends up flicking a peanut, ricocheting it off the seat cover (laughs) in front of him, into her throat, and chokes to death. Uh, Yes. Old lady. This racist old lady. And Yeah. We don't know much about Bullseye right now other than the fact that senior citizens are in trouble if you're anywhere near Bullseye. Anybody. He kills two people, two old people, in the first two scenes that he's in. Yeah. Yeah. And... Climaxes, I think, when she chokes to death. He was pretty. You know, I'll like, tell you that. That <sighs> once again, I really uh, like the scene, and I love Colin <laughs> Farrell as Bullseye. But like that was weird. You <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, can I get some napkins? <laughs> His, his look on his face when the stewardess is like, oh, she's sleeping. Anything else? And he's like, more peanuts, please. More peanuts. Yeah. <laughs> he looked drunk as hell. Well, he oh, hadn't yeah. even spoke. He didn't say a word in the pub scene. That was the first line yeah. he spoke was more his, peanuts. Yeah. His first line in the movie is more peanuts, That's right. please. Uh, <laughs> his eyes are like says please. Because he was coming down on <laughs> her. So Matt and Murdock's <laughs> back out. He's doing his daredevil thing. He shakes down a... A kingpin thug, you know, gets some information. Oh. We're not there yet. Oh, sorry, <laughs> dude. <laughs> We've talked about this. <laughs> he, <laughs> all right, he's going out and he's doing his daredevil thing, and he shakes down this kingpin thug, and ends up scaring this kid who he doesn't uh, realize is next to him. He shakes down a mugger who's mugging the the worst actor in the world, apparently. Yes. Because the guy's just like, oh, no, please stop. I, I don't enjoy this at all. <laughs> I didn't even pick up on that. <laughs> like, it's so the painful. Whole scene, the whole Reed scene was so, just that scene. The whole scene was so crappy, I didn't even pick up on how crappy that was. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. And so he, this kid starts to freak out, and yeah, and then Ben says what? <clears throat> Oh, he says, I'm not the bad guy, kid. Right. Well, yeah. You kind of are, though. Because he, he, <laughs> he chases the mugger back to the right. mugger's home, because yeah, evidently yeah. he just goes and mugs people, you know, yes. down the staircase from where he lives. 
<laughs> if I get to my house, he can't see me. <laughs> right, make it back to my house and take my hat off. He won't know it, it was me. It resets when I close the door. <laughs> exactly. It's, Grand it's a well-known five. fact that muggers <laughs> mug five miles within their home. <laughs> it's like they got the circumference. Or in this case, five feet. From yeah. Uh, from yeah. And he likes to leave his windows open, apparently, too, because yeah. he gets in and there's this wind blowing through yeah. the curtain. And you're thinking, like, Daredevil came in through the window. Right. And Ben, uh, Ben, well, <sighs> Matt Murdock is so upset. Because the this kid is kid crying. Yeah. That he mopes for like a day. Yeah. yeah. He's just really got to think about that. The next right? day at work. He's just What's wrong with you? About it. He's going to take a motorcycle out into the desert and think about <laughs> like it. Like cool voice. <laughs> we have this shot of him still that night thinking, dressed as Daredevil. He thinks. drives, wait a second. You said he drives a motorcycle out into the night? Into, into the, the desert. desert. <laughs> That's like, what he should do. He'll think about it. I'm going to go think about it. Just blindly. He goes out. He's He's got his stick. In front of the motorcycle. Just banging. What if he just has like <laughs> like little like like playing cards and the spokes yeah. like you did with your tires when you were a kid? So it just oh, so that creates so, the yeah. sonar. Yeah, so it creates the yeah. sonar. I was just thinking of so a big bell in front. Ding ding ding. ding. <laughs> Not All a right. horn though, because no, then no. he'll lose control. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. It cuts to a shot of him now dressed as Daredevil. He's still moping and thinking about this, and it's just a shot of him on the roof. And this to me sum up. The, one of the big problems with this with this movie, and, and one of our patrons wrote in about this too, was about how they got this $30 million increase, and instead of using it the way they should have, they put all $30 minute, million of it to visual effects, right? Right. Here's a shot of him, and if you go back and look at this shot, it's all CG. It's him standing on a rooftop yeah. in the city. Mm -hmm. The building's not there. The city behind him's not there. Not right? really. It's all fake. And I'm like, it's kind of like that shot in Moonfall where they digitally like that of Patrick Wilson pulling away from the house and it's clearly all CG. Right. And I'm like, you couldn't have him ride a motorcycle down the street. In this case, you couldn't get a shot of Ben Affleck standing on a roof. You needed a CGI a shot of him on the roof. Well, they, they don't not just have, have roofs hey. around in LA. You know what? You know what? <laughs> what? That's what happens when Christopher Nolan doesn't direct your movie. <laughs> oh, we, he's the only guy who can do it. He's the like, stuntman that played Batman legit stood on the Sears Tower to get that freaking we, helicopter know, that was shot awesome. in the Dark guys, Knight. That's guys, right. That's there's a roof on this building. We could just go up there and shoot hey, this. He's in the studio. Somebody get Ben screen. Affleck. <laughs> they shoot. They're in front of the green screen right there. Uh, they're like, we just go upstairs right now and knock this thing. That's out. what I'm saying. In two seconds, yeah. we'll pocket yeah. the rest of the money. Like, on top, of, it's just so heavy-handed in it. Yeah. Everything about it, it's like this this yeah. random cutaway. Which, once again, I know it just makes more sense in the director's cut. But it's this random cutaway that's like, I'm not the bad guy. I I know I'm not the. I'm not the bad guy. I'm not. The bad guy. I, I'm not. I just know it. Hey. In my heart. In my heart. <laughs> All right. So Electra shows up, which is the first thing that snaps him out of it. She finds him on the street. I knew I'd find you After here. all that. Yeah, yeah. All the other expo dump of, the, of yeah. the. I want to show I want to show you something. Yeah. Okay. Or no, Ben Affleck says to her, I want to show you something. And a wiener. <laughs> that's not it. <laughs> oh, wait, that's, I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead. I'm she jumping bring, ahead. I apologize. Brings him up, brings uh, her up, to, her the up to, the, to the rooftops there. Not CGI'd. Just to show her, wow. She's like, wow, CGI City looks beautiful from up here. <laughs> I should have seen it wow. when I was a kid. It was lower graphics. <laughs> it was 8-bit. <eight> <laughs> it was 8-bit. Eight now Beep. it's 64-bit. And... Oh. Uh, and this is like like Matt Murdock's playbook for dating, right? It's like assault her, <laughs> insult her, insult, bring her to the roof, lie show to her, her the roof, be touch. Like, no one's ever been up here before. Touch her face. Yep. Show her the roof. Uh, make it rain, and that's right. it. Works every time. Make it, make it rain. <laughs> you know what he says about the rain? I wrote this down. Yeah, tell me what he says about the rain, so I could remember this. <laughs> Each raindrop makes a sound the first time it falls on a surface. No, yep. not the second time it You're falls right. on a surface. I know. Matt? <laughs> nope. Notice not that. Not the second time. Yep. The or raindrop the hits time. the surface and it's done. Yeah. <laughs> it stops making That's noise. <laughs> so that would give him approximately three seconds of vision. Yeah. In a storm like this. Look, it, again, every scene makes her look like a moron. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because in here, he's like, it's going to rain. She's like, no, it's not. Oh, yeah. The, the temperature the, the, drop. Whatever it is, right? Yeah. But rain doesn't come out of an empty sky. I was right? just going right. to say, so, like, where are the rain clouds? So if she looked up, she either looked up and saw there was Bloop. Big, ah, big rain ah, clouds. I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> or she's a moron. Those are Nimbus clouds. <laughs> hey. Hey. They didn't have to make her seem so stupid. Uh, 
Well, her dad's from Big Daddy, so, so that's well Ground control to Major <laughs> Tom. Anyway, no, uh, yeah. my my thought was right. So this whole thing, mm-hmm. she all of a sudden it starts to rain, right? And then right, and, and then you can see her it, face, right? And now all of a sudden, but like like you were saying, it's yeah. one drop. Yep. Then it's like now there's heavier drops. So the more drops goes against what he just said. Yeah. Because he said the first drop only right. makes it. Ah. Uh, so I'm sitting there going, "There's that goes." In, what are you saying? So right. as the rain falls, we have once again found a movie that doesn't follow its inner no. logic. When, yep. when, when the rain falls, Ben is then it, Ben Matt. I keep doing that. Matt Murdock is then able to see her face, kind of fully realize because all the noises he can use in his sonar sense to I see just, her. Please stay. Right. I want to see you. And. And he starts to hear something about Kingpin because he can hear blocks away. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, I've got to go. And she grabs his hand and it's raining and she says, stay with me. Yep. All right. And so I, all the joking aside about the stupid thing he says about the rain, I, th- I legitimately thought this was a really beautiful scene and really well done between the two of them. Yeah. I, the rooftop scene or the following scene? No, this scene right here. Okay. I, yeah. Say what you want about a lot of the movies we've talked about. We're just like, I don't buy these two at all. There's no chemistry, whatever. No, you're sucked in. One hundred percent with these two. Yeah, I mean, they were married after this. Okay. I mean, there was legit but chemistry between the two of them. Was there? I I one. I remember back then being fully invested in, in as dumb in Benefer two point oh in no <laughs> in the movie. Oh, okay. There's lots of things <laughs> that are dumb and tone breaking and stuff about the film, and I remember walking out of the theater going. Eh. Him? Right, but one thing I was fully in on was the two of them. Yeah, yeah, okay. Him in a jar of pickles would have been <sighs> a better love story. I don't agree. I, and it's specifically this scene, very well done, very specifically. Beautiful. Yes, I will agree I, with you. James. I think the rooftop I, scene is well done. Yeah, the following with the stuff, eye sucking, the PG thirteen, yeah, sex scene, right. That follows the PG thirteen <laughs> sex scene, which is not in the R rated director's cut. Yeah, <laughs> given her probably a good reason, he <laughs> probably didn't want that. Scene. They start making out in the rain, uh, right? And he's like, "Come into my superhero, I mean apartment. Uh, not that's not a superhero lair. Where do they sleep? <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Don't look in there. <laughs> yeah. like, you see those statues? Because I can't. <laughs> you see the um, statues of this angel <laughs> of like this flying angel caressing the, the breast. Being, the breast. Of he's like, he's like cut <laughs> straight to the love making because she would have walked in and been like, hmm. That's he's like, you see that statue? We're gonna do it like that. Right? <laughs> Get your wings out. <laughs> Look, the the problem isn't necessarily the chemistry. I think it's more so just the believability of the story where it's like yeah. sure. So this is just like the second time. So now Electra is stalking him, mm-hmm. right? That's the intro. He, you know, he's like, Oh, yeah. He looked he chased her down the first time. Yeah, now, now the second him. time she finds him and chases him down. Right. And I'm like, all right, well, this is the second time that we've even was that oh no, hey your other. Ben Affleck impression or your Jennifer Garner impression? Yep, you know, same. That that's <laughs> oh hey, <laughs> I, it's just funny to me. And I was like, okay, and now we're here. We are going yeah. home run all the way, and we're in love. I didn't expect them to go for it. I actually didn't even remember that they went for it right yeah. after this scene. Yeah. I remember really. Li- I remember the scene in the rain, even yeah. from back then. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm sitting there watching. I'm going, oh yeah, they do it after yeah. this. Like yeah. that's yeah. kind of a jump. I wanted this right. scene where And they're tried. in love. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> it becomes a thing where he's like, right. I'm in love with Electra now. And it's <laughs> like, you've been with her twice. What were you going to say? <laughs> I wanted the scene where he's like, no, no, it's cool. It's an isolation chamber. Just crawl in the bed. <laughs> Yeah, like, we're gonna sleep. That's the part I didn't understand. So does he still have a normal uh, bed? Yeah, right. round two's in the pool. <laughs> for, <laughs> round for two in the pool. In the pool. It's yeah. his water coffin that's the pool. <laughs> he's, yeah, and then he's got this bed to have sex with people that he doesn't bring people over there. So right. yeah. Was it at her? I don't know. Does he sleep in the water coffin? Did they so. just break into somebody's house? <laughs> right. <laughs> right yeah. there like, at the rooftop. This is even my house. <laughs> <laughs> and he, well, he can throw it off anytime anybody comes in. What's going on? And he's like, oh, I'm blind. I'm, I'm like, sorry. Right. I'm blind. <laughs> Wait a minute. This isn't my apartment. Wait, are you Daredevil? I can't see things. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's like trying to put his tights back on real quick. Like, oh, sorry. <laughs> Where's my mask? Oh, where's my mask? Where's my mask? He wakes up and she's gone. She's left this invite, which Fozzie or Fozzie. Foggy earlier had tried to get him to go to because they had gotten the invite at the office. Well, you let him know it was engraved right. so that, a, that you could touch it later. Right. Sure. Talk about a rude way to invite someone. Like, hey, you're blind. Here's a piece of paper you can't read. Right, and left well, it on it's the engraved I, so like, that he can touch it. It's not in Braille. It's. I'm assuming he it's could not. read before he was blind. Why couldn't people just? Well, yeah. Why, why don't they just feel regular letters? I never understood that. <laughs> yeah. Get with the program, blindies. <laughs> 
<laughs> like if, like in modern day, there's they a just... lot of offense in this <laughs> one. No, huh? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just on this on That's me. what I'm just saying. This is offensive to blind people. This whole movie. Like they should just write things in embossed print with normal letters as opposed to braille. On the TV, just have it stick out. Yeah, seems like a whole lot extra work to make up a new language. Man. I can't read it fast enough. All right. A whole new industry. <laughs> so they go to this fancy party, and uh, to get through it here a little bit, not a lot happens. But why not just hold up flashcards for deaf people then instead of sign <laughs> yeah, language? Yeah, but the party, the party ends up being a moment where it was kind of like, um, yeah, where she, you know he finds her now. Well, that's what I'm and saying. Yeah. yeah. So Matt Murdock goes in. He he takes some time he before he oh, runs into Fisk. He does take time to insult Wilson Fisk directly to his face. Yeah, uh, just. Again, like <laughs> I'm Daredevil. Well, here's our. We big, don't represent guilty people. No. Here's our big. Uh, every big every character breaker. in the movie is kind of in the the room now. Yeah, we yeah. also got Joe Pantoliano here and, and Ben Urich's there, who who meets yeah, Matt also and notices his stick, which will be important for later. Yeah, right. He's the only cool one. Cool color. He says, "Cool color." Right. Seems wouldn't to know. be the only one to notice. He's also a major dick to Urich most of the time. It's like he's like, "I hate you for no like." There's no yeah. reason. It's basically mind your business. That's but that's his attitude. He's literally like, "Hey, like, I'm right. Yurik. I want to talk to you." And he's like, "Piss off!" Like he, he does, kind of blow him off. It's because yeah. the writer needs to just advance the plot. So he only had like, Yurik there to just notice like, the stick. Well, yeah. he had yeah. him there to be like, "Hey, I'm Ben Yurik," right. and like, "Oh yeah, alligators in the sewer." He's like, "All right, well, here's my card. Give me a call." And like he puts his business card in his pocket. Once right. again, another thing. Like, why did you just give this blind man a business card? Right. Yeah. So okay. here's up. here's what yeah, I'm thinking. Up. This yeah. is what I kind of. This. <laughs> so I think he knows that he's Daredevil. So what he's doing is mm. testing him to see if he's blind, gotcha. to see if he's really blind. Because he's doing things like knocking the thing out of his hand. Right. Oh, that's weird. He didn't catch it or move. He Trying didn't to flinch. shake his hand. Then it was his way of being able to pick it up and inspect it. And then oh. it was also his way of putting, like, here's my card, almost to be like, ah, uh, ah, uh, can uh. you see? So Do you, you know that right. I'm doing? You think he knew it before he saw the stick in the morgue? I, I think, think he's, yeah, I think he's known the whole, I think he was hmm. on the inclination of knowing that he's Daredevil. I really like that theory. That's Maybe. a good one. That's yeah. what I felt. That would make the movie a lot better if they had filmed it. If like only. That. If <laughs> they had filmed it like that. After this, he does sniff out his girlfriend, who's at the top of this beautiful staircase. Yeah, right. And uh, like a cocker spaniel, he so sniffs his way up the railing. Well, you and, got and John Favreau there <laughs> once again. John, John Favreau, John Favreau in tow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that was great. Oh, John, yeah. What if Daredevil He's sitting was a there, cocker spaniel? Hand on the statue. <laughs> that would just be the best. And then mm -hmm. he moves his hand down, and it's like a boob on the statue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He doesn't realize, realize he's fondling a breast. And then right. he, oh, yeah. excuse yeah. me, right. He gets up there. He talks to Jennifer Garner, and they they come down and dance. And I love how Jen, even Electra is like, "I am hot AF yeah. tonight, and yeah. you should see this, right?" I, I got dressed I wish up you could. just for you, just for you. Which yeah. I don't know if you knew this was actually a true story. So in the making of Mark talked about this. He said that was a story from uh, somebody that he knew was blind and told the story about how his wife on some it was an anniversary or what. Uh, basically said that to him that I know you can't see me, but I got I wanted to look nice for you tonight and dressed up, and it was a really sweet story. Yeah, yeah. So he put that yeah. in the movie specifically because of that. I thought well, that was like that. She slides yeah. his glasses was, off, right, yeah, right. and was like, I want to look at your real eyes. So I'm saying I thought the romance usually was weird, really well weirds done. you out. I want to you know? see your googly eyes. eyes. Your googly eyes. <laughs> 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 and he, here's one thing I like to say, and I, but I, I don't want to to turn this into a giant 10 minute debate considering how much we still have to get through but okay. i do want to call back to dude where's my car <sighs> where we another excellent movie talked about there was a part in that episode where we talked about how why on earth are they going nuts over the fact that christy boner talked to them when one of them is dating jennifer garner and they're like oh hot girls would never talk to me and this is ridiculous right and we even put that clip out about that yes and there was a ton of people that saw that and argued with me and a majority of people were like because Jennifer Garner's not hot at all, and I never understood why that was a thing. And I would just like to submit Daredevil as Exhibit A for the defense of Jennifer Garner as exhibit a hot person. Exhibit A for <laughs> Alias. Or, or just, as Alias, too. Oh, but yeah. I'm just saying, like, this is the next thing we've done That's since then. That's a good then. segue. Nice. Yeah. That's nice. a really good segue. Was good. This is the next thing we've done since then, and we haven't really had a chance to ever go back or defend that position. But man, oh man, Jennifer Garner's smoking hot in this movie. Whether or not you think she isn't always or has been in other things, there are some people that look better in certain things than others. And what I don't know that she's always hot. She's right. always no. beautiful. But in this well, movie... I think she's always beautiful yeah. and always attractive. I've never looked at her and was like, ugh, 
Jennifer Garner. Like, I, yeah, I think she falls in the category of not always. Like, <laughs> and I don't mean that. I don't mean that. I think she looks like a dog all the time or something. Yeah. But like, I'm just saying. Like, there's times where you're like, meh, nah, you know. <laughs> Like I'm not no, saying she's I don't ugly. Know. Sure. Yeah, I was gonna say. I'm <laughs> you know, me and James are no, rolling no, no. the same boat over here. Is, we just threw you a raft, and I'm, you're just floating aimlessly is, out into guys, the world. You guys are aware of other people that you feel the same way about. Them. Oh, it's not necessarily no. you think they're ugly. You just think that like yeah. they're just not always attractive to you, right? Yeah, I Princess mean, Diana. I'll tell you, we could just. You know, well, she's dead now, so it'd be kind of weird if you thought she was hot right now. Well, I kind of said that about Uma Thurman uh, kinda, during yeah. the Batman That's right. episode. Right. Because I, I, there's example. like four or five yeah. movies that I find her very attractive. She's very attractive. When and there's other times, other times where it's, it's like, sort of homely looking. Yeah. Uh, Farrell, if you got something to add, feel free. No, I was just going to say, let's just undo six years of Me Too movement and throw it out to the Patreons. Are you hot or are you not? <laughs> hey, we've been doing that. We give out a hot babe award on this show all the time. That ship uh, has sailed, my friend, a yeah. long time ago. Long time ago. <laughs> but but uh, women welcome can to the show, find men hot. That's okay. <laughs> like, like, they're, right, exactly. Yeah. Where's Steven Seagal when you need him? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, I'm, I'm, I'm actively pushing against that because I hear all the time women talking about yeah. who's smoking well, look at hot Aquaman. and who's not and I mean, all that stuff. How many so times are women googly-eyed for... Uh, Jason well, Momoa? Yeah. 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 And, you enough. hear it all the time enough. and nobody's... Yeah. Oh, well, nobody's like, oh, well, you're victimizing men. Or objectifying. No, Momoa. Yeah. No, Momoa. <laughs> no, mo, mo, mo. <laughs> well, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if you think he's hot. I'm not going to sit here and be like, because I'm not, I don't look like Jason Momoa, I'm going to be like butthurt and be like, no, that's sucks. what I'm saying. Yeah, like, I'm go joking. ahead. I don't give a crap. But I'm, I'm, saying it'd be I'm, ridiculous I'm tired of not being that. able to say myself. So, yeah. Jason Momoa, hot or not? I think he's hot. One hundred percent, he's a hot guy. Hot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Momo is a great looking dude. Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. would ever say that he wasn't? I don't know. Blind kids. I'm, Daredevil. <laughs> Matt Murdock. Daredevil. Daredevil wouldn't be into Matt Murdock. <laughs> Matt Murdock would definitely not think. No, he'd <laughs> smell Momoa coming around the corner. We'd be like, get the that, fuck out of here right fish? now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fluke. That's right. right. That's All right. weird. So, Why does she smell like him? Daddy yeah. Nachos in the middle of this party has to leave, right? He's like, uh, he gets a little uh, rose from Kingpin, and he knows what that means, right? Yeah. Uh, so he's we gotta like, go. we got to get the frick out of here. Uh, takes a while too. Takes a while, but even Electra's like, sorry, Matt. Like says, I'm sorry to him. I got to go with him. It's and my dad. Yeah, not before she decks one of the bodyguards. They get into the limousine us. together, and they're taken off down the street. Yeah. Right? yeah. And Matt yeah. ruins everything. Here's how Matt Murdock ruins everything. And Bullseye as, kills Frank Miller. As, <laughs> yeah, right. But Frank Miller was a little cameo there. That half a second body that falls into frame yep. with the thing in his head. Yeah, that was Miller. Frank. That's, oh, our, yeah. that's our guy. I didn't realize. Yep. He's driving down. He's standing on top of a motorcycle like Van Damme and Hard Target. Yeah. You know, just coming down the street and knows that this is Mr. Nacho's uh, limousine coming this way. Right. He throws a bunch of Dudikoff stars right through the windshield. From his okay. belt buckle. From his belt buckle. From his yep. belt buckle. Yeah. Okay. Throws all the Dudikoff stars right into the, the drivers. Right through the windshield into yep. the drivers. Kills all of them. Two of them. And all yeah, of them. All of them. Well. Why are you wasting time correcting just, me on this? It was just two. It's just <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one driver. The two of them are dead, why these turn into two so and a half hour episodes. <laughs> Fun story. I was telling Did our buddy. Did all of them die? I was telling my buddy Joe today that I was on the episode with Mr. Farrell. He's like, good luck. It's going to be a five and a half hour episode. <laughs> all right. Anyway. He's not even here and he's slamming Ryan. Daredevil. <laughs> After the, the limo crashes because both of the two drivers were killed. Yes. One. Daredevil. One's working the pedals. The other does the, uh, the driver and the passenger. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I Go know on. it's the driver and the passenger, Ryan. <laughs> it's the guy I on the roof. I can't even get through it. Let me get through it. Let me set it up, and then you guys can talk about it for 10 minutes. All right, do it. Let All me right. just get it out. All right, I'm going to recuse myself. Okay. The the limousine crashes with the two guards, or the two guards that are in the front seat that are dead, and now Bullseye is coming down towards Daredevil, Yep. who basically, like, a Colonel Guile kicks... Bullseye off the motorcycle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Very CJ. And then in the process has dropped his billy club, which then yep. Bullseye uses to kill Daddy Nachos because Matt can't grab it in time. Right. Well, yeah. He yeah he whips it, and then all of a sudden you see the 
he like gets the blurry vision and he can't quite see. I don't remember what goes off to make the, the vision motors, blurry. The motorcycle, the motorcycle, motorcycle explodes. explodes. That's right. right. And he can't. Like shock wave. So he wants to stop the billy club, but right. misses it. Right. And then all Electra sees is Daredevil standing there and assumes it's him. Assumes it's well, him that because of the billy club, right? And it's yeah. and it's got it. And so she fires her gun at him and he yeah. gets the hell out of there. Well, and and Boom. Bullseye first threw a star at. Daredevil and Daredevil dodge, and that really pissed off Bullseye. Right, because that's kind of set yeah, up you why missed. he wants missed. to kill. Yeah, him. I missed. I that's never missed. That's important. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And but but again, she never sees Bullseye. A, a right. movie doesn't make her very smart in almost every scene that she's in. Maybe it's because the scene sucks. <laughs> well, why does it suck? It's a non-starter. The whole scene is a non-starter. Like you build up Bullseye as like he's. Standing all godlike on his right. motorcycle, mm -hmm. and you got Daredevil like he's coming in, and all this other stuff, and then all the you know, the two people get yeah. It's like all right, here we go. We're gonna get this good fight scene with Bullseye, Daredevil. First scene, maybe kind of introducing their conflict. Right. Mm -hmm. It's literally like three things. It's like oh, you dropped your stick. I threw the stick. You missed the stick. Bullseye. Bye. Peace out. He literally says bullseye. Yeah, and leaves. Right. He leaves and he coat flips because that's Colin Farrell's favorite thing to do in this movie is to coat flip. It's a little too much. Every yeah. time he does anything. When you coat flip, if you I'm sign off. Entering a frame or leaving the frame, I'm flipping my coat first. Even if I'm just jumping off this building. If he was like, I gotta go to the bathroom, he'd go <laughs> with his coat. He's, he's, he's at rehearsal and he's like, <laughs> and then whip it out. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Whip that's your coat. Gets it you out don't want to uh, Well, yeah, you don't want to pee on it. <laughs> the coat flip drove me crazy. He's like standing there with the, in the wardrobe department. Like, do you think he can make it a little flippier? <laughs> yeah, I gotta have a thing to do. It's cut back cool to enough. the motorcycle scene. You almost would hope that a director could make such a better, if only, motorcycle scene where somebody comes in on a motorcycle mm. between the hero mm. and the villain. Oh, and then there's a standoff on the street between the right. hero and the villain. This I don't know. The Someone only do that. contact. Well, in I'm gonna say. Hmm. The only contact in, as you said, was a fully CG Daredevil right. doing yes. the kick, and it looked terrible. Yes, yeah. I agree. We were an uncanny valley level. Oh, yeah, for bodies. sure. It was kind of like it, it, the second Matrix movie where he yeah. fought all those Agent Smiths. And looked <laughs> and they, like They just bit off too much at that point. Like, they tried to do the- like, They become rubbery. Yeah. 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 You know I mean, it was clearly not real people. Yes. In Go the bonus. first movie, they in the first Matrix, they used the CGI sparingly yep. where they needed to, and it looked great. And then they're like, let's just do it all in the Matrix. Where was it? Revolution? Reloaded. Was, or yeah. Reloaded. Well, both of them. And yeah. it was just like, oh, yeah. Man, yeah. It's, it's like they much. were all a part of a, a yeah. boneless even, chicken ranch. Even rant. Neo, as he's running uh -huh. around, you could tell it's not Neo. Oh, yeah. Right. When, when he's been in when he's the on stick. like the, yeah. the thing and yeah. he's spinning around in the Matrix yeah. Reloaded, doing like the do 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 Yeah, it yeah. looks stupid. But maybe it's possible because you're like, they're in a computer program. And that's the only right. way you can go, okay, maybe I'll well, buy it. But in this case, this is happening. In a, on a New York it's City even street, passable in the sense of like, yeah, they're in a computer program, and right. there's a thousand Agent Smiths. Right. This is just like one guy, like one good guy, one bad guy. Right. So why do you have only. to do it? Do something where you can use them. Have him throw the billy club at Bullseye and knock him off the bike, just and that, and now he's got the billy club. Literally just anything. Like this is such an important part of the movie. Right. This is like the the turning point of like now Mr. Nachos is dead. Right. Electra thinks it's Daredevil. Bullseye, Bullseye's got a vendetta now against Daredevil. Like, this particular scene sets up the rest of the movie. Right. Yeah. It was really cool to see Batman versus Penguin finally. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mind blown. It was Batman you're, versus you're Penguin. Welcome. You're welcome. Right. Uh, <laughs> wow. This wow. scene actually, right. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that. It's true. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> As Bullseye would say. Yeah. Bullseye. Bullseye. Yeah. Bullseye. Rubs his. Yeah. <laughs> go flip. Uh, I gotta go. What's this pose? What's the, this? Is the bullseye? <laughs> it's pretty good. In every I scene, see a that he's in, yeah. it's pretty good. It's a it's a big oh, lean forward. Come on, so yes. it works for the. It is a trope scene. though Not. for her to mistake the like for the someone to mistake the main character or like the hero mm -hmm. as the villain or like. Well, it would have been awesome if they would have gotten yeah bullseye out of there. And then it, I think it would have been much more clear that he, 
no, Daredevil's but he's now the right bag. Yeah, there. and he's like, right. and he's still like, I bid you adieu. He's I have to go. rubbing his yeah. forehead. Yeah. yeah. And this is what I mean. And they do her character his coat. dirty yeah. throughout the entire, how, every scene she's in, they're like, how can we make her seem like the biggest idiot? And she's supposed to be one of the, like, one of the strongest allies yeah. of Daredevil in all the she's comic books. She's a great books. character, and I think yeah. Jennifer Garner did as best she could, but the, it just did her dirty, man. I think the director was like... They Jen did her dirty as a toy, too, because she was just literally another Psylocke. Oh. She was just oh. a painted, oh, a repainted geez. Psylocke. Hmm. You remember that? Yeah. So Matt goes back after this happens. He goes back and he trashes his apartment. And I was cleaning that up. I don't know why he's so mad. He's got seven more clubs. I don't know why he's so pissed <laughs> he off that he that he lost my the favorite other one. club. Right? Uh, literally is knocking all the other ones off of his freaking shelf. Well, you know how it's long it takes now. me to whittle those? <laughs> 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 the club guy already thinks I'm Daredevil. I can't order another one. He's gonna know for sure. <laughs> this is for Daredevil, isn't it? No. <laughs> And you said you wanted a Daredevil red? So we go to the... Uh, did I say that? I just, regular red is fine. Uh, they go to Daddy Nacho's funeral, and they play Evanescence at the funeral. Yes. Yep. It's just awesome. It'd be a great funeral. And that, I'm, I'm assuming there was a boombox just playing, right. and like, that's what was going on. Yeah. That's how I played well, Evanescence. And if you have to leave... Sorry. Um... Matt, then the scene always pissed me off, even back then. Matt didn't do crap to her. No. Yeah. And she she goes so hard on him here at this funeral. I understand she just lost her dad. Yeah. Right. But she was so cold. Yeah. But the umbrella move. I'm not going to tell you. The umbrella you. move. I, I, almost one tear came <laughs> at that moment. I was like, oh, he got shot out so oh, bad. So, it doesn't make any yeah. sense Not even at a all. look back. Well, what happens is it's raining. And she yep. knows. And she knows the trick. Yeah. And so she and he's like, I want to see you. Yeah. With such a purposeful middle finger to him. Well, and he does yeah. the same line. Stay with me. Yeah. Like Don't she did. Don't leave. And she's like, boom. Boom. Umbrella. This is what she did. You can't see me. Or. Yeah. <laughs> or. Or. <laughs> or. Stay with me. You could just get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm not going to keep doing my thing. And I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I couldn't believe... It. Again, it just doesn't track from a character standpoint at all. I know that's whole, most, the whole thing is supposed to be, my mind is now bent on revenge. I have time for nothing else. But the blow-off did not need to be... They didn't need to go that hard on it yes. at all. I, I just thought it was so good. Because it, <laughs> it, it made you mad for so, Daredevil. You're so like, what you're oh, saying? no. Like, <laughs> what? He's yes. heartbroken, too. So what you're saying is the inconsistency in the character arc yes. made it more effective for you. Yeah. For me. Yeah. yeah. What did you for think, For me, Ryan? it just made me piss it off. I mean, it's just another stupid scene in this movie. <laughs> <Okay>. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. You guys are, like, locked in together on this one, I see. It's, I, it is hard. Like, I agree. It is. It's very harsh. Like, the, the, very the umbrella sound effect, even of, like, the flip. Yeah. Yes. It's literally, yeah. like you said, it like this movie. It was like, like she, she flipped him the middle finger. She just flicked him off. I felt the knife yeah. in my own heart yeah. standing there in yeah. my living yeah. room. Yeah. Oh. I think I was uh, more distracted. <laughs> I was more distracted by the inconsistency in the character arc to say, like, oh, yeah, that really hurts. I was more like, who wrote this? Right. God. Mark Stephen Johnson. Mark Stephen Johnson. <laughs> he was probably like, and now she's on her period. And I'm just... <laughs> she, I, 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 <laughs> Daredevil seeing red. Oh, man. Um, all right. So and the of next course, scene, the, the whole movie just being a... Uh, Almost. Ah, that's later. Not yet. Wait. Not wrong yet. Evanescence scene. Yet. That's not the wrong yet. Evanescence scene. We're not there yet. So we're we, getting there. We cut to, we see our, a cameo from our man Kevin Smith at the morgue. Yes. Yeah. Kevin Smith, who, yeah, probably got the job as, as somebody I think mentioned to me in their mail that because he was, you know, recommended Ben Affleck for the part, but he also wrote, wrote for Daredevil, Daredevil comics. Yeah. Hmm. Some of those Marvel Knights comics were written by Kevin Smith. Yes. Right, right. And yeah. so it made a lot of sense for him to be in here, and I thought it was cool that he got to play around with yeah. Daredevil's Billy Club and all that, but he calls Ben Yurik in because he's obviously a CI for him, and he's like, I got something cool to show you, and it's Daredevil's stick, and at first Ben Yurik's like, I don't, do you, give me my money back. This is, I've seen this before. Yeah. Right. And he but goes, then he, wait. Yeah. Twists it and out turns into the walking stick. Yep. And then I, I thought at that point that's when the light bulb went off. Maybe just confirmed. Well, what we I think it here. just confirmed. Like, yeah, sure. yes, and that's now possible. I've got it. I've got this. At this point, now we know for sure he knows that. So you're Matt Murdock. Now Yurik knows Murdock is Daredevil. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. And so back at Bad Guy headquarters, uh, <laughs> yeah, Wilson Fisk Tower, Kingpin gets in 
And all he wants, all the man wants to do is just go look out his window and smoke cigars, but he can't because Bullseye is John Wicked his henchman yes. over here. I think he literally is John Wick. This <laughs> is the pencil scene they're talking <laughs> That's about. What I'm saying right. it's the pencils in the neck. Let's kill the guy with a pencil. Like this is that he John. But Wicked I do did. love that Fisk is like. Did you really have to do that? You <laughs> yeah. didn't have to do that. This is really an right. inconvenience. They know who you are. Yeah. Uh, they know I hired you. Yes. But the dialogue in this scene, as much as I love MCD, it's so bad. And even this, they cut down. It was even cringier. Hmm. So he comes in. He's like, how do you defeat a man without fear? Yeah. By putting the fear in him. Yeah. yeah. I was more distracted by the what? fact. I do like, though, that he's like, uh, like, yeah, yeah, like, uh, yes. He doesn't have fear. Well, you yeah. you make him have some. Oh yes, let's do that. That's all that, right. That seems <laughs> like it might I work. Guess, do you think, do you, think yeah. you can do that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have fear. You make him afraid. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I think it would have been great to see Michael Clark Duncan just go. Oh. <laughs> 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 what were you I gonna like say, that. Ryan? I, I was the whole scene. I was just more distracted by the fact that he just opens the wall and there's a pre-made martini in a shaker for him. <laughs> I made this earlier. I was just I making it cool. <laughs> he just like opens the wall. He's like, you know. he doesn't know there's a bartender. <laughs> the I've got it. It's like that wall that you got right. with the doctor when you pee in a cup and right. you put it in and then you shut it and then the doctor opens the other side. He's like, there's just a bartender on the other the side. Bartender's just locked in. Martini yeah. for him. I have a guy. I have a guy who lives in there. Yeah. Lives in the wall. He's like. <laughs> When he's like hiring the bartender, he's like, "Okay, I'm gonna open the wall, and your job is to hide as quickly as possible. No one can know you're there. <laughs> Always you're, make sure there's a martini no, in here. Because come what out. I want people to think is that these just appear. Yeah. All right? Can you do that? <laughs> sure. I guess, uh, do I ever get to go home? Like, no. You <laughs> no, live here. Uh, you have to live here. <laughs> this is your <laughs> life now. How much does it pay? <laughs> well, you get free room and board. So. <laughs> that's right. All right. That's Knocked New York that City. Hey, that ain't yeah, cheap. Right. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and he tells him he's like, uh, also I want you to kill Electra, and I remember it going the bartender. Why? He tells his bartender. <laughs> no, he tells Bullseye. Oh, <laughs> I got you. I'm sorry. I was, still, like, I mean, I'll do I was it, still in the vision of that. I don't so. know. They didn't do a great job of establishing what the motivation would be for Kingpin to kill Electra. No, there's a line. Who was just an innocent bite. Well, there was a line somewhere earlier that. Um, Someone says, like, Kingpin doesn't just kill you. He kills your whole family. Okay, great. Yeah. So anyway, Okay, great. I'm just saying there's that. And then it ends with, with uh, Colin Farrell saying, the devil is mine, right? Like, I'll yeah. do that one for free. He made me miss. He made me miss. Yeah. And he goes, I want a bloody costume. <laughs> now, and then they cut the end of the scene, right? But if you go back and watch the making of, he actually says, I want a fucking costume. Right. The actual, okay. Because mm -hmm. they show this part of the making the scene. And then after that, the costume's the no different. The cheesiest laugh. <laughs> yeah. Of the, which didn't make the cut. But in, if you go back, like he's like, <laughs> he's just Jeez. raising his arms up in the air. Who? Like, like bl Mike? bullseye. Bullseye, yeah. After he says, I want a effing costume. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the most over the top <sighs> in a man that's already going at uh, 12. 11. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeez. But but, and I'm like, oh, thank God. It, like, they this is them trying to edit it down from what he was doing. Sure. Did he. That's not a necessarily a bad problem to have, though. No. Is to have an actor up. Like, then you can talk him down. But they should have talked him down during those scenes to say, okay, a little less. He literally <laughs> talks about this in the Talking Head segment when they're interviewing him during the making of. He's like, well, this is the kind of thing. I'm not going to try and do his accent, right? Because I can't. He's like, this is the kind of thing where, you know, subtlety has to just go out the window and you just go full camp and full over the top as hard as you can. Literally, he just said it right there on camera yeah. that that's what he's doing. All subtlety he threw away and he went as over the top as possible. Right. And I, I understand maybe he thinks this is like a cartoon for kids, but the problem is not right. everyone else making the movie thought that's what they were doing. And so it's totally inconsistent with like well, what Ben Affleck is doing right. is not what Colin Farrell is doing. Right. And and even if you look, go back to like see our first episode ever, and you look at like a Raul Julia who's eating it up as Bison, he at least seemed like he was taking it seriously. Right. Whereas Colin Farrell is not at all taking it seriously. See, I thought that there was a actor's choice there, like it was made, and the director was like, "Yeah, I like what you're going with." Oh, he probably because did. Because in the comic book, for me, when I read Daredevil comics, yeah. Bullseye was precise. Yeah, he, he was like measured. Uh, yeah, everything needed to be a certain way, and that's where he over obsessed. Almost like OCD. Yeah, so like that that instead of it being like I'm over obsessed that I missed, 
Right. Like that would have happened. Right. Because he was crazy at the fact that he was so precise. Right. That that would have never happened. Right. Huh. So in the comic book, he was that way. But he was very precise. He was very mathematical and right. and, and meticulous on how hmm. he delivered his yeah. weapons of choice, whatever it be, a psi or a you know whatever he ended up using. But I mean, that's also an interesting thing too. Is with comic book movies, how they choose to make the suits not necessarily like what was in the comic books. Yeah. I mean, even Daredevil's suit was very close, but like he never had an open collar. Right. It, the the suit was all kind one of piece, like yeah. a one piece hood, and all that was out was like Batman. Well, they try to be like chin. in a real world, how would it work? Right. Right. So as yeah. Bullseye, I mean, it was like okay, he's a trench coat, then he's got the kind of cool. Branding, I guess, on his head. It looks like he was branded as opposed to tattooed. Yes. Originally, it was going to be a tattoo. Whereas, when Mm -hmm. in the comic book, he was just, again, same as Daredevil, where it was like a latex suit with the cross on his head. Right, right. So, I did know that. I did know that. Yeah. Did yeah. they give him a costume though? It seemed like he just don't. No, have to no, you're right. They just that, showed that's up. That's another the same line. Thing. That's right. another line that's just like I want a Wasted. bloody costume, and then he's just Fisk wearing the like, same clothes. Tough. Right. Yeah. It's like they just gave him a new trench coat and a new so pair of pants more and a shirt. Flippies with it. Yeah. yeah. But it looked the same. This like one will flip better yeah. though. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. It's got more razor blades in the bottom. Then we get to the next training scene. You're right. Now we get more Evanescence now. Yes. And this the is... The quintessential Daredevil scene. Yeah. Did we win the lottery? What did we do to deserve two Evanescence songs? I know you love this song. In I, the movie. I, I actually can't even listen to this song without <laughs> yeah, but, thinking of you. I just can't imagine... I, I unapologetically love the crap out of it. I can't imagine I know, I know. a room where you would have sandbags <laughs> that drop from the ceiling whenever yeah. you want. To just stab and yeah. drain sand everywhere. Well, so to, 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 so to when you're Electra To set it you up, know. Electra's in what looks, she's a millionaire, what looks so. to be a yeah, ballroom, yeah. right? Yes. Like in some dance studio. Dance studio, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. And she's there with her size, and Evanescence is kicking, and she looks awesome, and she's, yeah, she's doing totally the flips. Yeah, she's totally kicking butt, right. She put in a ton of work getting comfortable with the size so that she could just do it on camera. Right. And just she like, looks amazing. We talk about the different drills that she would do, and she looks awesome and she's kicking ass. And you're right, to train all of these sandbags on the ends of just ropes start dropping all around her and she's spinning around, slicing them open, yeah. stabbing right. them with her size. And then, then some more will drop down yes. from the ceiling and she'll kill those. So is there just a guy working levers? Like I want to see the guy hired. that's just up on a ladder somewhere and he's like Trying to pull the different ropes <laughs> yeah. in time. He's throwing uh, the sandbags over the. And he's edge. like, "How? Now? now? Yeah. yeah." He's like, "I'm gonna get you on this one." <laughs> she goes to kick one of the sandbags. I said, "Kicks his ladder." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a general contractor or something that she hired. That's it's just, just like Tom. it's just Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I just need you to install some sandbags. Tom, I need to install some sandbags. Uh, he's and, over and, there and blare that evanescence for me. <laughs> they're, all, they're all all the ropes are tied around you know little anchors or yeah. whatever, and he's literally just trying to. <laughs> Pull the ropes in the time in the time with where she is. Yeah. Like, oh, 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 I, I missed, missed one. I missed one. one. Pulls it back. Oh, I missed the Daredevil one at the end. Yeah, that would have been great. Waits for like, he runs over to get the last yeah. one. <laughs> I wanted to set up all those. I wanted to see her spin around <laughs> since it's a dance floor or like a, a presumably wood floor. It's all yes. sand now. Here comes Ed. But just eat shit like <laughs> it's too slippery. Yeah. Or a right. sandbag just comes down and takes her out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Ed comes out with his push broom. Yeah. Right. So after this, got to clean this all up. The one thing we know for sure is that she could kick a sandbag's ass, and if she gets attacked by one. Right, they're it's dead. Done. Then if it's, she then gets attacked by over. immovable object, or That's immovable I guess in this scene objects, they did her yeah. dirty no. as well. Then I think the yeah. whole oh, point of this scene Jesus is just man. to give her a chance to look hot and be awesome and kick ass, and yeah. to use an evanescence song. and to use an evanescence song yeah. and twirl her size around and all that. It's very effective. This is literally when, like, I think of Daredevil. This is what I think of is the scene with Electra. Is the sandbags? Is the sandbags right. evanescence yeah. and Electra? I don't even think of Daredevil. This I think is the <laughs> scene that got her the spinoff movie. Yeah, right. I'm yeah. serious. Yeah. Uh, is she cooler in Electra at least? No. I haven't seen <laughs> No. I, you know what? No. I was going to say, has anyone, not even in it. has anyone seen Electra? I have. Of course yes. I have. I you think after I watched this, I didn't go watch Electra? <laughs> Did they do her dirty in that We season? just talked about how phen- phenomenally beautiful yeah. she was. We're going to cover it on the show at some Okay, point. perfect. I was going to yeah. say, I think Electra is even a worsely ranked movie yes, than Daredevil. It is. It so, is. yeah. All right. I've never so, seen it, though, so I'd love to do it. 
Bullseye is on the roofs. He's he's flipping his coat in the darkness he's or whatever. His coat <laughs> against the moonlight. Against yeah. the rubbing light. his rubbing his head. Rubbing his head and flipping his coat. <laughs> Daredevil and Elektra then also end up on the same roof. Awkward. Sure. Uh, you know, she they just all knew him. where each other they were. They were just like, Oh wait, you're here? Oh, you're here? Oh, fun this is weird. You here. Yeah. Daredevil got the invite with yeah. the uh right. Well, he they're, sniffed his way there. They're fighting through all this laundry. There's all these clothes uh. hanging out. And I remember like I just want the lady doing laundry. Be like, what the frick? Are you guys? <laughs> I just hung just, those. Just, you know how long it took me to hang those? Said. Or she comes out after it's all done and her cl- clothes just all over the freaking place. What and she's the like, fuck? <laughs> <laughs> gonna do all this laundry again? Uh, she picks up a sigh off the ground and she's looking around. Yeah, there's, there's blood spatter everywhere. <laughs> blood spatter all over shattered. bed sheets. There's helicopters flying <laughs> overhead. Stop! Put down the sigh. That's right. <laughs> I'm just trying to hang my laundry. Put it down. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Jesus, killer. We're not the bad guys. Yeah, man, that director's cut is crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so, so as Daredevil's, you know, uh, absorbing kicks and shots and dodging sighs from Electra, he's trying to be like, "I didn't kill your dad. It. I'm not the bad yeah. guy. I'm I, not the bad guy here." She's like, "Liar!" And really starts to pound on him, gets him up against the freaking wall, and stabs him through the shoulder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You might right. say he's uh, airing out his dirty laundry right through. Uh, the, right through. So. <laughs> Right Rushy. through the glass. Yeah. And it goes through his shoulder through the glass behind him. Yeah. And he's like, oh. She pulls it out. Yeah. I'm going to take back. a nap yeah. now. Yeah, he's passing out from a shoulder wound. It's kind of lame. Like, literally, like, don't, uh, no, it's okay. After you everything gotta, that Matt Murdock has been here. through. Yeah. Yeah. What's, yeah, yeah. She re- she pulls off the mask because I want to see the face of my father's killer. Pulls it out, realizes it's Matt, and starts to cry. Yeah. He's like, no, you uh-huh. found my one weakness, a sigh through the shoulder, specifically in that location. <laughs> <laughs> and zippers. He's like, I'm so, and she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. She apologizes to him. Immediately is obviously clear she's forgiven him. like, no, nah, we're good, man. It's not him, we're good. But he's like, you got to get out of here. Paul's eyes here. Uh, and he's like passing out. I'm like, dude, yeah. you just took a side of the shoulder. Yeah. And even you should if, be like, able to at least stand up. Yeah. In, Your legs are fine. In real life, that he's might, just exhausted. In real life, that might put you down. But right. so we all know in movie land, that's not going to make you like be passed out yeah. on the no. ground, especially if you're a superhero. Hey, it's like how my kids are when it's hot outside in the summer. They're like, I can't walk anymore. It's right. probably <laughs> compounded trauma. I can't see because oh of my, my shoulder. Gosh. Yeah, that's what killed his dad. <laughs> <laughs> compounded trauma. And so Bullseye <laughs> shows up just at this moment when Matt is like. You know, I can't get up my shoulder. I can't get um, up. Now, here you go. I can't yeah. get up my shoulder. Right? And I, I do can't love get he up. does you nothing. you got to fight him. There's a moment where Electra's like, all right, I got my size. Yes. I'm walking away. Yeah. And man. all of a sudden, you just look over, and there's Daredevil. He's just hunched over. Yeah. Yeah. I'm take there's a, nap. a cutaway to him just, like, laying there. So, di- so, so now. All right, Ben. Uh, just sit back. <laughs> hang tight for, like, 20. Uh, We're going to do a yeah. fight. A oh, I fell asleep. Day. Keep fumbling. Keep going. <laughs> So Bullseye's up a little bit elevated from where Electra is, and yeah. she chucks us. This part I thought was cool. Yeah. Chucks the sigh at him. He catches it. He, and you see him like getting ready as it's coming, yeah. too, right? It's yeah. cool. He catches it. Jack Burton's it basically right back yeah. at her. Sure. And, and then she, she tries catches it. it. She tries to do and the then same thing. Well, cut. She did catch it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Technically. <laughs> Technically, she caught it. Yeah. She does. But the camera cut was cool, right? Because yeah. you, think, yes. you think she caught it. She caught, caught it. it, yeah. 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 And she but then turns around the, the trauma, yeah. Through her hand. Yeah. So yeah. the one pull it out. cool shot of this whole scene. Yeah. yeah. CGI too, it's right? Good. Well, I'm, no, it, I'm assuming it, it I mean that been. sigh yes. was much longer than the one she was hanging on. <laughs> when she pulled it out. Yeah. It yeah. Huge. Yeah. It just kept coming. <laughs> it was like the clown that like pulls the oh, yeah. like Tissue paper out of his pants. Keeps coming up. It just da, 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 oh, da, finally. Now it's a rapier. <laughs> yeah. Now she's got a fencing. Yeah. So now they got to fight each other. And guys, this is the wire work. It's just them jumping yeah. around on wires. And they're fighting. And she's getting a couple shots. But they have this big knockdown drag out brawl. And you're right. At one point, it just cuts That's to Daredevil. That's generous. Yeah. It's just he's, mid fight. And he's, he's just, just napping. And you see, he's trying to get up. He's like, but he tries for a second. He goes, Ugh. My shoulder. Like he tries to push one time. I just. Your girl you're in love with is going to get murdered. Yeah. And you can't get up and help her because you got stabbed in the shoulder. Yeah. It's the lamest part of many lame parts to me yeah. from a character standpoint. <laughs> the man without fear who can take a beating. He and he's like, got all these scars on his back. He, he watches his girlfriend getting killed. And he's like, eh, I can't get up. He stands up. He looks like Jim Carrey from Ace Ventura 2 when he takes a bunch <laughs> of the like elephant darts to the neck. Oh, yeah. And he's just like, ah, my legs are getting numb. <laughs> <laughs> 
Too many darts. Too many darts. <laughs> hey. That's, what, that's exactly what it is. Uh, right before he kills her. It doesn't, it's like, I like how they show the rapier go like, like it doesn't penetrate her. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. You said rapier. Yeah. The side right. penetrates. It doesn't penetrate her jacket. No, he's right. so, so yeah. Bullseye has him right before he kills her. He because there's no more surefire way to make a girl think you're cool than to do sleight of hand magic. He's like, oh, here's a card. I'm this bullseye. This is how I have sex. <laughs> chucks the playing card and slices her throat. Yeah. Right. Doesn't right, kill right. her with that, but she's like, oh, crap. That hurts. Oh, good, crap. Good oh, sell job really by stings. her. Oh, man, I got a paper cut on my neck. Then he picks her up. <laughs> Okay, and and little runs her runs thick, her right. through. I do know that <laughs> runs her through with a sigh into her stomach and lifts her up off the ground. Yeah, yeah. and so you see this kind of shot with it won't penetrate the back of her corset, right? Gosh. Yeah, but that's a shot straight from the comics. Is it? Yes, it's an iconic shot from the comics. Really, the death of Electra killed really? by Bullseye was a big issue back in yes. the day. Mm. Was it? Much so. That yeah. literal shot, and even in the comic book, it didn't penetrate the corset. It, Interesting. And so they did that on purpose uh, to recreate that all right, shot. Fine, you changed my but mind. Then the, <laughs> The wound, though, is too low. It later. was. Later. You're right. But I thought, I was like, oh, I can't believe. Like, that's just another one of the ways you can tell the guy loved Daredevil. Yeah. Yeah. Whether he did a good yeah. job or not, hmm. he specifically wanted to put certain He tried Shots. to cram just too much of the mythos into one movie. Well, yeah. yeah the that's... death of Electra, all this, you know, the right. origins, all this stuff. So sure. Electra gets killed by Bullseye in the comics. Yes. And and brought back to life. Killed. Resurrected. Oh, right. Which, okay. Yeah. yeah. But, right. but, Ultimately, yeah. <laughs> this is another funny thing about Daredevil being knocked out. Now he's just still got the shoulder wound. Yeah. She's been run through and on the ground, and then she, she comes climbs to him. him. Yep. Yeah. 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 He like, makes her come to him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, still showing that she's the tougher one, that, but still dumb. That's in, yeah. That's in I'll the, go uh, to him. It, Instead of him, it would have been so much. He's like, more, I can't. Can you come over? I to think me? it would have been so much better if she would have, if he would have climbed over to her. Yes. Yes, and then like caressed her body. It was and, like, and, like oh, picked her up or whatever. Why? Right? Why? Yes. This is this is in his playbook God. though for how to get girls. Is, is that what no, this you got to treat them like I crap. I also love. Make them come to you. How tight yeah. his mask is to his face. Oh, it's on there. And then there's this tear that somehow leaked out. <laughs> right. It's the Beastmaster <laughs> tear. They put yeah. the yeah. with the eye on the outside of the mask. <laughs> he cries on the outside of his. He cried mask. so hard he cried through the mask. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, puts the tear so through much. the leather. <laughs> I squeeze tears through the eyes yes. of my mask. Yes. <laughs> the cops start to roll up. And man, oh man. Roll does, up, fly up, does SWAT bullseye, team. Yep. Does Bullseye do that coat flip hard? Oh, yeah. yeah. He's out. <laughs> when he leaves this scene. Right? He did. That he was does. his hardest he one does. yet. He was just like, <laughs> I'm out of here. With the coat flip. I did my damage. I'm out. Yeah. Oh, she crawls. He's like, I can't make it. You got to come to me. <laughs> She crawls over to him. He's like, are you dying? My shoulder really hurts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no big deal. I forgive you. You stabbed me. Uh, uh, this is your fault. I can't come pick you up. <laughs> if you would have just not stabbed me. And so we flash forward to the beginning well, of the no, movie. We finally caught up to the yes. beginning of the movie. Now he's Thank on, God. He's on top of... And that shoulder must really be bad because he falls all the way to the floor. And well, yeah, he starts, <laughs> well, yeah, he starts getting away from the cops. He's right. swinging from rooftops, which now his shoulder is fine. Why couldn't you swing yeah. over and help your girlfriend out? Yeah, no. Nope. Right. <laughs> right. Sorry, I was passed yeah, out. Yeah. But he's like, oh, 5 I got to go. Right. <laughs> we find out he's got this... I mean, we had to skip some stuff, but... He's got this relationship with this is, priest that knows who he is. Yeah. yeah. And so he tries to help him. And as the priest is there on the floor of the church trying to help him, Bullseye walks in the back door of the church. And he does the sign of the cross and then the stupid pose. And he's like, Ugh, I'm Bullseye. I love that scene. You'd like that? When he comes in and he does like... And the crucifixion pose? He throw Because he throws the thing, right? Well, he and throws it, the offering plate the, into Ben's neck. No, no. no before he, that. No, he throws the star at the Padre. Oh, yes. Because it hits the back of the altar, and he does the thing. He says, first shot's a warning. First shot's Padre. a warning. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I really like that. Because I, I like bulls. I like Colin Farrell's bullseye. I, think, I oh. love your opinion on this movie. <laughs> you love all the things that are dumb about it and hate the rest of the stuff that's cool. I guess that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's your opinion. This, this I'm just mimic, kidding. I'm just kidding. This <laughs> mimic like Western standoffs. Oh, for sure. I mean, he did the whole, like, pa you know, and shot one time. Right. And then he's, you know, kind of said the line like it would be in a Western, like, for shots, a, a, you know, a warning. And then, you yeah. know, does a bow, like, just to wait, like, mm -hmm. your move, you know. And, and then he, yeah. he's like, I'm going to help Daredevil up. 
But now still. he can get up and fight. Yeah. Like he's he like, can, now he's well, I fight. love it. He kind of like pushes yeah. the priest away. He's like, go <laughs> run. And again, he's standing there like with the limp <laughs> arm. Yes, yeah, with the like, limp arm. Eh, okay, let's do this. I got a little more in me. And he's, warm it up he's a got a little more in him. Yeah. CGI Daredevil and CGI Bullseye chase each other up the organ pipes. Yeah. The it's like giant so many organ stories, pipes. dude. Three stories high. <laughs> of it, organ it, pipes. Because we jumped up there. Pipe the organ the size of. God. Of the of Gosh. the church in Batman 1989, no. yeah, right? yes. I mean almost. They they jump no. up this thing. The floor is not that far away. But then later on, when the bats fly out and he's falling, the floor is 200 feet yeah. below him. Yes. Tell me, he's like, what Arr. pipe organ in the world has a pipe that is? What, what was the circumference on that? I don't at know. least it six had, inches. At, yeah, it's huge, if not more. It's, I mean, no, they were able huge. to stand on it and hang That's on, what I'm and saying. they fight on yeah. it. Right. I don't know if the the production I don't designer know, I don't know ever what saw pipe a pipe organ, organ. in the middle too, like, you, and then just hangs there. <laughs> you, you know what a pipe organ is, right? <laughs> you know what a oh, pipe yeah. organ looks totally. like, right? Totally. All of a sudden, they look over and there's Baby Huey's basket <laughs> and, and and the and the Firebird from Big Hit. That's where the egg came from. It's like rolled out of one of the pipes. They get up into the. They just like unveil at the production designer's like, you mean this? <laughs> and he's like, bum, yeah, bum, bum. close enough. Yeah, that's what I meant. They get we'll into the upstairs it. of this church, which is like, there's another floor, 400 feet in the air from yeah. the other floor. Yeah. Right? I imagine who climbs the stairs up to that thing up there. I don't know. But they're having another part of the fight where he's throwing more of the Dudikoff stars at him, and he blocks all of them with his right. billy club, right? Yes. Yeah. And then oh, yeah. f- now Bulldog's getting pissed. He kicks out the stained glass that yeah, he does a flippy flip. I like that where he through the stained the... glass window. He catches you them like, like they're pizza pies. I thought that was cool that he caught all those. Yeah, but, but the way he caught them, and he's like, sure, eh? yeah, eh? yeah. And he like kind of yeah. smile like Daredevil. Look at what I can do. <laughs> and then it cuts back to him, and he's just got like this a stack, stack of like plates. this. On <laughs> both. Like, yeah, and then he throws them. Well, How do you throw them around? when your yeah, hands are full? Sense. Yeah. Hey, he's bullseye. But here's the trick. With bullseye when he's throwing things at you, yeah. just duck because he only throws them at chest height. Right, that's it. That's all you do. Instead yeah. of doing all those backflips, he could have just say, ducked. Instead of ducking though, he's got to apparently just do a bunch of backflips. He dare, yeah. yeah he, he daredeviled. I almost felt like it's a verb. He flipped backwards and he missed with all of the stained yes. glass. And they're so. all at chest height, so he could do that right. backflip. Which literally doesn't even minimize his like target. Which cut no, back, he's the same size. Which cut yeah, back yeah. to the Matrix well, with the, la- the bullet yeah. scenes where they're like flying over Keanu's face. And yeah. that last it's the same thing. It's just stained glass flying over Daredevil's face. That last stack of stained glass, he's like he's literally throwing at him like he's making it rain at a strip club. Yeah, right? and he's yeah. Just exactly. literally starting to do this shik, 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 yeah. with yep. it and chucking it off. And for never missing, he seems to miss a lot here. Right. Well, that's why he hates Daredevil oh, so he's much. Just, yeah. yeah. Daredevil's right? the only one that can Hate make him miss. Just aim lower into his legs. He gets him on the ground though and then this is when i mean talk about trope bullseye's like well this fight's about over so uh Wil- <laughs> wilson fisk is the kingpin <laughs> wilson fisk is the kingpin and he killed your dad and he does the red rose thing all right yeah. be cool <laughs> <laughs> what it's, right i yeah. mean he yeah. just like no and dumps it position all dump. Yeah. Since I'm about to kill you, this is literally from Last Action Hero. Remember Charles Dance? Yes. Since I'm about to kill you anyway, I might as well reveal the entire plot. Yep. Yeah. Yes. But that's okay in Last Action Hero. <laughs> that's okay. Right. This is what happens here. Oh, it's so <laughs> dreadful. <sighs> I knew you would love that. It's like he it's so unprompted of he's like, Oh, so the rose thing. I'm not much for that. But Wilson, he loves that shite. And it's that, like I just, he's the I just can't believe that Daredevil yeah. was so blind to it. By the way, oh. Oh. <laughs> So moving so, on. Moving on. So a sniper a sniper shoots his hands through the glass, shoots bullseye in both palms. Well, he's oh, trying to shoot yeah, yeah. Daredevil, and Daredevil pulls back and pulls yeah. his hands forward. And pulls the, his hands forward. Because we have a police yeah, presence at this point. He can, hear, he can hear the gun cocking and shooting or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And the sniper apparently got the okay to shoot someone. Take, a, take, a, take him out if you get Just a take chance. Take him out. You get yeah. a shot, take it. Take the shot. But what are the cop when they're, you know, they're first, it's like the typical oh, D, cutaway. Yeah. There's the typical cutaway, like, the t- you know, the detective's like, well, let's break the door down. Where's my SWAT team? Yeah. Get, yeah. And, you, know, you know, get a clear shot. In a ah. movie where Colin yeah, Farrell. Said you take a, you get a clear shot, take it. Yeah. 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 In, in a movie where Colin Farrell did everything over the top, I thought he really undersold the fact he'd been shot in both of his hands. Yes. I mean, he was like, whoa, uh, I got shot in both my hands. What am well, I going to do? Well, and then he do? does the, like, <laughs> they don't right? show it, but he does the crucifixion joke. Right. right. He right. pulls his arm. They, they, but he's, they show it here. 
And you then know they he's show doing him it. going his arms out. Then they yeah. cut to Daredevil. And then like, they come back and that. they're like, oh, I'm pulling it back in now. <laughs> yeah, like, no, like, that's yeah. too far. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, even without the stupid, because that was dumb. Yes. Yeah. He was just like, oh, don't hurt me. My hands are shot. Yeah. And he kind of no sells it. My hands. Bit. You took away my hands. Yeah. Right, now, right now he's what is John he, Lennon. The well, then he pleads, yeah. <laughs> he pleads for mercy then. And Daredevil yeah. chucks him out the window. He Bleeds kills him. for mercy. He's yeah. like, you know what? Oh, but he doesn't kill him. Well, I don't he, really but do But as far mercy. as he's concerned, he kills him. Right, right. Right? Yeah. Which is funny because later on, he doesn't kill Kingpin. He's like, I'm not the bad guy. Like, he just yeah. made this. But you just killed the guy. He's yeah. killed. He probably half killed 20 ago. people. In We're there now? That first bar, he doesn't kill so Kingpin. Yeah, way. so after he That's throws, right. after he chucks Bullseye out <laughs> the window and Bullseye's twitching on the hood of Ben Urich's car. Yeah, right, right, right. He's like, time to go get Kingpin because he conveniently told me that it was Wilson Fisk. That's right what I mean. This, that, this whole undersold plot line yeah. of like now all of a sudden, last five minutes of the movie, yeah. we have finally established that Daredevil knows who Kingpin is. The, the, right. And you're the telling me between... Kingpin this whole time doesn't know Matt Murdock is Murdock's no. kid? Well, he does. He does because he reveals that at the end. That Right. He right. knew that was his kid, but he didn't know that it was he was Daredevil. Yeah. Right. right. And right, what I'm right, saying right. is that yeah. they, they didn't do enough to set up the two of these guys in a rivalry at all. Sure. The, yeah. The Daredevil bullseye stuff was more set up than Kingpin and him. No. Yeah. They had one interaction and and then this thing at the end. And so it didn't have a lot of weight to it to yeah. me. No, I none of it did. No, like yeah. the whole Kingpin plot line did yeah. not have weight to it. Even no. from the first like the first expo dump yeah. of the mentioning of Kingpin. Kingpin should have been a thing set up over multiple movies. Like, yeah. you could have been the one pulling the strings on stuff, right. and then you fight him in the third one. Right? Or even or if, if this movie were two and a half hours long, right. and you actually had the time to, to do it. develop everything's right. characters. Yeah. But. So he so Kingpin sends the guards home, because he, he, the guy's like, we've got a problem. He goes, send everybody home. He knows Daredevil's coming for him. Right, because that's exactly what you should do right. when you know you someone's coming to kill you. He grew up in the Bronx. That's right. I know, I know. That, uh, yeah, just to, <laughs> to make this... Extra convenient. <laughs> yeah. What's well, funny when the, guy come, when the guy comes in to tell him, he again interrupts Kingpin just trying to stare out the window smoking his cigar. Like, yeah. Again. The only thing I've ever wanted to do <laughs> is look out this window and smoke my cigar. <laughs> and y'all can't stop interrupting me. I, I, I rose to this level in the city just so I could stop working and do exactly this. Right. Right? <sighs> Send everybody home. I'm tired of this. Tired. I'm just ready to die here. Okay. <laughs> Kingpin beats the crap out of Daredevil when he gets there. I mean, he's that was believable the too. When he oh, chucked sure. him one handed, for sure. I was like, that guy's ripped enough. Yeah. It's the only other scene in the like action scene in the movie yeah. that I think's good. Well, yeah. here's here's the thing. I don't know if you know this about MCD. He's an inch shorter than Ben Affleck. Really? He's only six three, and they made him look huge in Green Mile, but he's not this giant dude. Hmm. And so they had him on top of things and shooting him in different ways to make him look like he was towering over Ben Affleck. But Ben Affleck's actually taller. So how tall Michael is Ben Clark. Affleck? Six four. Ben Affleck is six four. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's why. That's why he worked as Batman so well because mostly everybody, Bale, Keaton, are these little dudes right. that have played Batman, and that's why when Ben Affleck played him, he looked like a giant. Huh. Because he's six four. Yeah, but even like in. It's like Armageddon, you know, he's like on the yeah. same level as Bruce Willis, and I'm sure they did some work. I'll tell well, you, Willis, they always try to make him look like he's not as short as he is, though. Right, right, problem. right. I'd like you to wear these six inch heels. <laughs> really? So the the big thing would be if yeah. we got Ben Affleck and Tom Cruise in a movie together. I want to see that. Then we would really that see would it. Really Tom Cruise, like just like <laughs> Daddy Affleck. Uh, <laughs> I want to be a real boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then he. Literally demasks after he beats the crap out of Daredevil. He yep. pulls his mask off, realizes immediately yeah. that it's the blind lawyer from Hell's Kitchen. I got to tell you okay. though, this is my favorite scene. Yeah, of the whole movie. Really, from from the start of of MCD pulling off his jacket mm -hmm. and standing there in the now like so that was the thing about Fisk. Yeah, in the comic books he was a fat guy. Yeah, and there was a reveal when all of a sudden you're like, oh, he's a giant muscle man, he's ripped. He's yeah. huge. Like he was like that was a big thing. Right. So that was kind of a cool reveal to yeah. me. And I was like, how are they going to do this with MCD? Because like, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to like just wear. Because like in the comic book, he wore just pants. Right. And I like that they did like a tank top, the wife beater, yeah, and then yeah. did the like suspenders yeah. through the back. Like you're like, yeah, that's cool. Was well, cool because he had a big belly, but his arms and everything, his chest were all huge. His yeah, arms he's still giant. massive. Yeah. 
So like he, I just I love this whole scene. And yeah. then when it goes to you know the unmasking, like mm-hmm. you said, and he's just tossing him around like yeah. he's a rag doll. Yeah. I mean, there's that scene where he just picks him up and like whips him across. With his leg. So just yeah, yeah. like yeah. nothing. Right. And you're like yes. And even though you know it's some wire work being right. done, yeah. it's still kind of cool. But that's when wire work makes yeah. sense and looks realistic. Yeah. When they, right. Whenever they use it, they did it in X Men a lot too to just jump long distances and they'd slow down in the air to land. Sure. It's like like, okay, yeah. <laughs> physics work. Well, right. and some of them it was great, like Storm <laughs> mm-hmm. and Toad, and like ones that yeah. made sense that you would need wire work for. Yes. But yeah, okay. So for anyway, sure. but yes. So yeah, I just really enjoyed the scene. But okay. when they do the unmasking, and then there's the a little bit of the I, I didn't I didn't really need all the the dialogue. I, Nobody needed I it all the dialogue. I honestly think it was a huge mistake to unmask Daredevil in the movie. I agree. I I, I don't think they should have done it. No. So, yeah. uh, but I love now when he's like hears as he's like totally yeah. ignoring him. He doesn't right. even know everything he's saying. Right. He's just hearing water running through the wall now. The wall. The, yeah. He's like yeah. you yeah. know the water feature. If I shatter this thing, yeah, I can. And then you know, <laughs> Jennifer Garner's ghost comes <laughs> forward and says. <laughs> I'm with Use you. the force, Luke. Yeah. <laughs> and he's Sorry. like, Daredevil, you've turned off your targeting system. <laughs> I'm okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the rain, and now he can see him That's perfectly. Right. That's right. Yeah. So he slashes the like water. Like a sprinkler system. And now he can see Kingpin, and he just beats the crap out of him. Yeah. I like how it was. You close. killed the only two people I ever loved. Yeah. When he kicks out his knees, though, yep. and he drops, yeah. Yeah. MCD sells that it so dream. good. Yeah. yeah, so good. And he's yeah. just laying yeah. there, and now there's, now this is where I'm like, yes, I'm. I'm sold. Like I love the the conversing between them. Yeah, but again, even when it gets good, they do a little bit extra to ruin it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, because exactly. this part's good, and then he goes, and then he lets him go. I'm not the bad guy. We talked about that that whole thing, right? He's going to let him live. Justice is served. After and then all you get, this, you know, like in Wayne's World, they did the Scooby Doo ending, right? Yes. Oh yeah. Then yeah. they get the 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 Doctor Claw ending. I'll get, get you. you next time, gadget. Yeah, that's yeah. literally next time. Yeah. As he walks away, you get Kingpin. I'm going to get you. I'll get you. <laughs> you so you're going to be so dead. <laughs> well, yeah. oh my. well, you didn't have to do that. It was so good, and then you ruined it. I also didn't get how he's saying like the cops are coming for you. Kingpin says to Daredevil, "The police are coming for you." Yeah. And Daredevil goes, "No, I can hear the radios. They're actually coming for you." But like. There's no setup for why they're coming for him. How they I don't him? think he did. I think what he was doing was getting in his head. Yeah, that's what I, how yeah. I took it. Like either way, he well, he was just being. That would have like, been good if he had done if they had shown that better. Because it, yeah, it was like, hey, hey screw you. In the like, hands of a better director, that yeah. wouldn't have been a problem. <laughs> <laughs> or I like that idea though. <laughs> yeah. Or just, it's in the director's cut. Yeah, which. Um. Go see the director's cut. Might be, yeah. Go see the... I have seen it. It There's no way to know. It is better. They sidelined the Electra storyline more, which I didn't like because I really liked that storyline, even though they made it look like a moron. Um, Right. There were aspects of it I liked. I wish they'd done her better. But, yeah, go see the director's cut if you haven't. It's good. All right, and that's essentially the end of the movie. Boom. Thank you. Well, yeah, then Matt Murdock walks around with his cane, and, you know, there's a whole, like, oh, yeah... Oh, in, the necklace, you're right. Yeah, he finds the necklace, and Ben Yurick writes an article about, oh, Daredevil's Matt Murdock, but then he consciously deletes it and right. says, go get him, Matt. It's like way the way worse version of Go Get Him Tiger from Spider-Man. Yes. Yeah. Right? Exactly <laughs> that. It's exactly that. Well, yeah, yeah. so the, the whole necklace thing, though, that was from earlier, too, because yeah. he, right. he sees the neck or feels the necklace on. In the rain, yeah. Yeah. And so he Jennifer knows Electra is alive. Yeah. 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 Right. You know. So now that's his cue. Yeah. Which she and it's in Braille. She could have right. just called him up. She could have. So. You know, I have a phone. For Electra, I'm not dead. By the way. That would have been great. Yeah. Send a text message on my old Nokia brick phone. Yeah, those uh-huh. things. Yeah. All right, guys, it we're going to start, for Braille. as we always did, with the Will Patton Award for Intensity. You want a war? I'll give you a war! I don't want them to gain another yard. You blitz all night! If they cross the line of scrimmage, I'm going to take every last one of you out. You make sure they remember Forever, the night they played the Titans. All right, so this is the award we give out to whoever had the most intense performance, as Will Patton would always bring intensity and seriousness to whatever role he portrayed, no matter how ridiculous the movie was. We give out an award in his honor every single episode. So we've got a lot to get through, so as quickly as we can, who is your nomination for the Will Patton Award? It's a toss-up, but I 
think I'm going with Colin Farrell. Cool. I know. <laughs> <laughs> How can it not be Colin Farrell? He didn't take it seriously. Yeah, yeah but he, he was so no, over right. the top. You're right. Yeah. That's that's where the toss-up comes right. in. Right. Because Michael Clark Duncan took it seriously. Wait, that's what mine's Michael Clark Duncan. I figured yours would be Michael Clark yes. Duncan. Yes. Yeah. I just felt like Colin was so over the top. And, that's, and I, that know the same that as intense? I knew that he would yes. he could also be better than that. Yeah. And and right. now knowing him like oh man and I'm just gonna say it again I love him as Penguin, like he's phenomenal in that. Can't and he's, give him this award no, because of how good saying, he was in Batman. No, but my point is is I know how intense he actually <laughs> can be in a real spectrum. Okay, and I felt like he was intense like over the top. If anything, too much in this. How one. good he was in that makes me downgrade his performance in this because I know what he's capable of. Well, I guess it depends on if you want to make <laughs> this a good award or a negative award. It's I'm looking supposed at to be it a good a, award. Well, I'm looking at it as a negative. He's so over the top that he's the intense. The, he's the most intense. The award is for intensity, not good or bad acting. Listen to so, Mr. Defining the Rules over here. <laughs> if we're going with the <laughs> you intensity. Go with? Do you want to know who I went with? Colin I went Farrell? with Colin Farrell. And oh, the reason being is it doesn't matter if he was taking it seriously or not. He didn't break character. He didn't mug into the camera like he a buffoon. Was, if that wasn't mugging, then no one's ever mugged in a movie ever. Ah, ah. He literally is like mm, into the camera like four different times. He wasn't looking into the camera. B practically looking ah. into the camera. It, you guys don't think he was mugging no, in this movie? Nah. <sighs> he it's, was being a it's, comic book character. This is why is I said it was a toss-up. He's it's a like, cartoon. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It which depends which on which way you want to go. Which defines... That's what is that not intense? The intensity... No. Of. It's its own version of intensity. <laughs> Mark, for sure. Michael Clark Duncan took the role seriously. He was intense in his role. He was scary. I believed him, like when he's whispering into Daddy Nacho's ear about, like, you know, not, without saying that he's going to kill him, that he's going to kill him, yeah. and all that stuff. And then the stuff at the <sighs> end with Daredevil and every. I mean, uh, that's the that's the part that he wasn't that like Michael Clark Duncan, for sure. I don't know. Pass. What do the patrons say? Eric Valov joined us today for the Patreon vote, and he went with Mark Margulis as Fallon. Really? Ventura. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> sure. See that? Yes, Satan. Yeah. It's uh, essentially a throwaway vote, so thanks that, Eric. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thanks for nothing. He was on screen briefly, but for me, he was menacing from the start. Even after Jack refused to lose, his stoic reaction conveyed a threat that retribution was coming and it would be brutal. Oh. And it's a shame that he's uncredited in the movie. I was going to say. I mean, uh, Mark Margulies is just he like that. He's on screen twice for three That's seconds. just Mark Margulies' face. face. <laughs> his face. Nice. <laughs> All right. Adam Lofton went with Colin Farrell, said, I think he read that script and was all in. I believed every second he was on screen. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> so Dave's so, standing alone so, on his I'll, I'll do it, and I'll so still go on right. Uh, Colin Farrell, Colin Farrell, Colin Farrell, uh, Colin Farrell from a patron. Yeah. So far, we got one. One. For yeah. Michael Clark Duncan. That's true. Uh, Sean. Sean. Help me out here, Sean. Okay, Spud. what is Sean going to say? Spud McHugh. You're going to take advice from a potato? I hated his character. Okay. Who? The bullseye in his forehead, <laughs> his dumb desire for a costume, and even his lines were poorly written, but he was in a thousand percent with his role. Wow. He chews up wow. every scene he's in, and you could tell he had a ton of fun filming this, so that's yeah means that Colin Farrell is going to win the Will Patton Award for Intensity. As deserved. And I I stand Look, James firmly stand in, in dissension. Your, of this, of this. Dissension. Your oh, opinion yeah. Yeah. doesn't not, matter. It's not wrong. <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm just simply outvoted. That's all. <laughs> it's not wrong. It's just it is it's not correct. Right. Right. It's just not correct. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Your opinion I, I, is on a spectrum. You know what here, I feel James. like? <laughs> I feel like I've just done a. I, in 110 episodes, I must have just done a crappy job of explaining. <laughs> <laughs> what this award is about. If you guys look at a Colin Farrell performance in Daredevil and think this is the most intense performance in the no, movie. No, I think that so. you're bending your rules like you like to do. Every May single, I remind you oh, that you like to go fired. above IMDb's 6.0 because, yeah. because Farrell, I want to, I feel like it. No, there's so a judgment like call sometimes. You, know, you we're like gonna, to bend rules. Go. And look, here's, here's <laughs> the thing. Bender. 
I, every single time, I feel like I'm going to say this every time, I introduced the Will Patton Award. I said to the actor who gave, the, I, said, or I said, every time Will Patton comes to a movie, he brings intensity, and regardless of how ridiculous, he takes the part seriously. I say that every single time. Mm. I Every single time I introduce this award. This is why I said it's, a, okay, Michael Clark Duncan brings the serious, but Colin Farrell brings the intensity. Mm. I, I think I Colin Farrell is I more think, intense than Michael Clark Duncan, but I think Michael Clark Duncan. There's a quiet intensity. Right. I, I would argue, though, that Colin Farrell's using artistic, like an artistic decision there to say, I'm going to go over the top like it's a cartoon because of the right. type of villain I want to portray. In, in, yeah. And in, that's his, uh, he is free to do that. And seeing him talk about it, he almost thought of this whole project as a joke and he treated it as such in mm. his performance. I think, so I don't respect yeah, that at all. I but, think maybe you just got swayed because of his. Well, saying. and it's perf- yeah, that, I think him say- saying that twisted I mean, I thought that, it already when I saw it, and then when I heard him say that, where did you see him say that? That was in the making. That's in the of. making of. Oh, he yeah. just said, "I'll settle the out the window. There's just no reason for it. Just camping over the top as possible." I see. I didn't. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't see. But that. if you hadn't no. seen that, I don't know if you'd have that same opinion. Mm, I think I did because I'd already had my stuff written down Maybe. and my notes before I watched <laughs> the Maybe. making. Maybe. Well, and now, now we're getting into where a, a better yeah. director could have. Possibly, yeah. possibly put a harness For on sure. it somewhere. And anyway. Let's move on. It's really the director's fault. To the well, we can that we can agree. <laughs> the award we give out to the worst actor in the movie. This the one's easy. Steven Seagal trash can filled with dirt. Trash can, oh trash can, it's a trash can full of dirt. Yeah. Love never dies, and neither do they. Love is eternal, and that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Love is eternal, and that's a long time. Oh, man. <laughs> I love that. That is a long time. It is. Uh, all right, let's start Not it a off. a false statement. Who did you say? It was an easy one, so I'm Ben interested. Affleck. Ben Affleck. Easy. He sucked. I don't agree at all in this. He sucked. He wasn't even believable as Matt Murdock. Like, he sucked. I... Th- okay. At his, like... When he, in the morning when he's waking up and he's like, Go ahead. I went with Matt Murdock's dad. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nice. In the morning he woke up. I'm sorry. What were you going to say? No, just like in his first, you know, his opening montage, he's like waking up and he's like feeling the braille for his dollar bills. And he's all like, yeah. uh, I'm going to this one. Uh, yeah. And then he's like walking down the street okay. like. How should he have played that any differently than a blind man searching for money in his in his wallet? I'm not saying that. That's not how it should have been played. <laughs> I'm saying that Ben Affleck sucked at playing it. Got it. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. I don't know how that, I don't know what that means. Uh, Brian, what do you have for your trash game? We got one for Matt Murdock's dad and one for Matt Murdock himself. Really? David Keith? So yeah. huh. the muggy that I referenced? Yeah. Where he's like, oh no, please stop mugging me. <laughs> this that's is, who you went with? That's who I went with. Oh my he's, God. No, you need to go back and listen. That's like one of the worst actors we've had on the show ever like, yeah it was so huh. bad he's like no 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 please that's not cool he was You're quite, bugging me he was quite literally getting Fair thrown enough. into a trash can full of dirt uh, yeah i i went with scott Terra, young he's, matt murdoch okay oh, yeah, yeah. I thought also he terrible was terrible yeah. also terrible if you want to take really you know bad. easy pickings and i just went with the bob hauser route and went with the child actor yeah <laughs> <laughs> way to not put any effort in this cool. kid sucked uh i right. don't know he was pretty good in the hospital uh, scene when he was <laughs> sponging out the window when he thought he was when he thought he was tripping balls yeah and then when he was looking out the window Windows, man. He did such a good job at staring out the window and being blind. <laughs> the thing right, is, so we have four votes and four different people, so it's going to come to the patrons. What were you going to say, Ryan? I was just going to say the thing is, Scott Terra sucked for seven minutes. Ben Affleck sucked for an hour I and thirty-seven agree. minutes. Here, I, so I, I, I've got stuff to say about Affleck. I'll get to it when we right. do a top three. Okay. Oh um, no, he's in your top three. Here's what the patrons say: Eric Valoff said the bullies. Oh, nice. He goes, I, he goes, I know Robert. Is it is it Robert Lee or Robert Iyer? I can't tell. Robert was famous from The Sopranos, and that's probably how he got the part. But oh. ultimately, he did nothing, added nothing. And I again, nothing wrong with that vote at all. Nope. Yeah, that was, that's fair. They were terrible, too. Uh, Adam Lofton came in and said, uh, to the one and only Ben Affleck. Sure. I didn't believe he was blind and his horrible, lazy eyes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and acting made me scream. Wow. Made him scream. That's two votes for Ben Affleck. Well, he's not blind. But. And uh, <laughs> it's true. Sean McHugh said Ben Affleck. There you go. Typically a great actor, but he bugged the crap out of me in this role. His narration was emotionless. He that spoke too. about his dad dying in the same way I read. I would read the ingredients in the back of a mac and cheese box. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> Plus, he just seemed to hate playing the character, something he publicly stated later in interviews. Uh, shout oh, out yeah, to that's true. his yeah. hairstylist for giving him the worst styled hair I've seen since Nick Cage <laughs> in Bangkok Dangerous. Oh, nice. Man. True. That's accurate. So, That's accurate. Can you imagine young Murdoch beating up a trash can thinking he's beating <laughs> up his bullies? <laughs> that means that Ben Affleck is going to win the Thank you. Steven Siegel trash can yeah. filled to the patrons. With dirt Take awards. that, Steven. To the patrons. <laughs> That's right. All right. Top three performances. This is totally subjective. So there's no right or wrong answer. It's literally just the three performances, whether they're good or bad, that you enjoyed the most. So this is another area that you bend the rules. Farrell. John Favreau, number three. Okay. Colin Farrell, number two. Okay. Michael Clark Duncan, number one. Nice. Cool. Nice. Great answer, Ryan. Good answer. Awesome top three. Gold Good star. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting gold stars now. That's great, man! Wow, there's a, it's wow again. Nice. It's subjective, so it's all good. Can't wait to hear you yours. seem really happy. About it. <laughs> You're going to after the whole thing about MCDC and Colin Farrell. Okay, you see right. what I did close. there? You see what I did there? I gave Colin Farrell the Intensity Award. I gave MCD the Top Performance Award. All right, yeah, I respect it. Yeah, yeah, Mummer. <sighs> my number three. Mm -hmm. Went to Jennifer Garner because mm. I enjoyed her as Electra. Mm -hmm. I I thought it was enough to get a spinoff. However, the spinoff did not uh, go as well as 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 had hoped. Uh, number mm. two, I went with John Favreau because okay. I enjoy his comedy constantly, okay. he, mm -hmm. even though he plays the same person every time. And I went with MCD for number one. All right, there because, you go. Because you know what, he turned me for. Yeah. I just loved him in this role. All right, so hit me with this, Ryan. Who's your top three? It's in the yeah, it's been okay. talked about. Yeah, John Favreau, number three, is number three. Okay, consistency. Colin Farrell is number two. <gasps> Whoa, <laughs> and Michael Duncan. Oh, <laughs> oh, nice job, Gold Star. <laughs> Way to be. What do you think, Way James? To be. I, John, I John Favreau Sir number Jameson. three. Uh, I John Favreau number three. Okay, Perfect. Great. That's your yeah, number yeah, two. Okay. All right. Ben Affleck is number two. Oh, okay. Here's 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 what I'll say. Are you turning on the Marky Mark? Okay. Ben Affleck had, I'll try and keep this short. Ben Affleck had a miserable time making this movie. That's his job. A miserable time. It yeah. is his job. Okay. But directors can and producers can make life hell on you while you're there shooting. The suit that they put him in was horrible. They had this dude, uh, it's like from a... You know, go ahead and play your tiny violin mm -hmm. because I'm just expressing what he's expressed. Uh huh. Okay. The, the suit was miserable. They had his ass on wires in almost every scene, racking his nuts. I mean, he talked about this, right? Mm. Jumping. There's sure, a scene where you can sure. see him getting pissed off where he's literally jumping from like here to there inside the church over and over and over and over again all day long. Okay? Wow. And That's they. rough. In a wire. Harness. Okay. Yeah. Feeling it. And on top of that, even on the front end during pre production, they put him through the ringer on uh, all these different uh, molds and stuff, which I know is common, you know, for this type of thing. Mm -hmm. But in the amount of times they had him do it, he, the shooting schedule, they, they, they did this rig across this wire rig across an entire street for two days for no reason. They couldn't even use the shot. He, so had, he had to work long hours? Awful oh. time making this movie. This guy didn't know what he was doing, put his main actor through the freaking ringer, and he had such a terrible time that I respect the hell out of, given the circumstances that he was in, I thought he actually tried to give a nuanced performance. He tried to do something interesting with the part, the best that he could in the you know situation they put him in. And so, yeah, I'm going to give it up to Ben Affleck under horrible conditions trying to pull out a good performance as Matt Murdock. And he certainly didn't go, I'm not taking this bull crap seriously, and I'm, this is a cartoon, and I'm going over the top, and this isn't even you know serious enough for me to try at. And so... So, yeah, I'm giving respect to Ben Affleck for this part. So what you're saying is he got paid eleven and a half million dollars to do this, and he got to meet yeah. his wife, who he fathered children with, named yeah. Jennifer Garner. Well, that and, has nothing yeah, to do with anything we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm all broken up. I'm all broken up. The for money him. does for sure, right? That plays into it. The guy got paid a lot of money, <laughs> but he could have got paid a lot of money to do something else. They all get paid a lot of money to do, and he earned at this point. He earned the right to pull that kind of money on these uh, movies, right? 
And I, I another, yes, another look star. At ben, look at Ben Affleck's career from 2001 to 2007. He earned every cent. Up before, we're talking about 2003 at this point. I know he went through a period where he wasn't making great decisions with right. the projects that he was Pearl in. Harbor, Geely, right. <clears throat> Daredevil. Yeah, for sure. But Geely hadn't hit before this did. Yeah, it did. Wasn't it the same year? It was, yeah. Right. So they were both in the can yeah. at that point. Right. So I'm saying, so it's not like Geely came out and bombed and then pre-production and this started and they're like, we're going to pay him $11 million. No, no. It was just right. one of those things where like, oh, 2003 was not Ben Affleck's year. No, not at all. <laughs> but I respect, and you know, you can make fun of all you want. These guys work ridiculous hours in a lot of pain in this case, and I thought he did a hell of a job given that. My number one was Jennifer Garner. She was smoking hot. Oh, my movie. God. <sighs> so. <laughs> wow. That's it. <laughs> uh, so we are we going to go get some tacos? Yeah. All right. We can go. Yeah. <laughs> Patrons. Eric Dalov had John Favreau at number three. MCDC. MCDC? MCD <laughs> at number two. And Ben Affleck, number one. What? Thank you, Eric. What? Adam Lofton. Number three, he gave it to Jennifer Garner and MCD number two and Colin Farrell number one from Adam Lofton. Sean McHugh came in with John Favreau number three. He's everyone's number three. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. Joey Pants number two. He <laughs> said, was my number two. He played, oh, okay, but in your top three. Yeah. Uh, Joey Pants played a great smart ass reporter, one of the few characters huh. I believe. Okay. I uh, never uh, even thought of that. Yeah. yeah. He, was, well, yeah. he was good. He was solid. And number yeah. one, Sean gave to MCD. He said, we lost this man too early. Yes, absolutely. Made yeah. the film watchable. He was great in everything he was in. Rest in peace. Did Michael you Clark know Duncan. he gained 50 pounds to play Kingpin? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He That's told him crazy. he was too skinny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, you're talking a guy who's already almost 300 pounds, and then yeah. you're like, yeah, by the way, you got to gain yeah. weight to play this Do you, role. like, yeah. chunk it up? Yeah, exactly. So, guys, we got to ultimately land on something here. We, we have to come to a spot where we are going to make a final declaration about this movie as it's uh, either a bad movie full stop, a good movie full stop, or it's a bad movie, we can acknowledge that, but it rules, it's enjoyable enough to say, yeah, it's an enjoyable bad movie. Where do you ultimately land on this, Ryan Farrell? Well, I'll tell you, the uh, theatrical version is a bad movie that sucks. That's what we're rating. I know that. <laughs> And I want to give another shout out to go oh watch the director's cut. Why can't studios just let directors do their thing? Like Zack Snyder, <laughs> way better when it comes to Zack Snyder's director's cuts. Here we go. Daredevil, Mark Steven Johnson. Where's the director's cut of Ghost Rider? Because maybe that's a better movie. Don't you think? It no? could have been. Anybody? Maybe. No, he's 0 for 2 with superhero movies. I, I know. Sure. Mark, Mark Steven, Steven Johnson, Johnson dropped also the ball did Ghost twice. Rider. Yeah, as Eric said, <laughs> 0 for 2 on both of these. Yeah. Uh, oh, he did Ghost Rider as well? Yeah, he did Same the first guy. Ghost Rider. Yeah. 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 He didn't do Spirit of Vengeance. All right, so he's bad movie that sucks, ultimately. Is Daredevil, movie. theatrical version, bad movie that sucks. Okay. Hmm. Kurt? Bad movie that rules. Bad movie that rules. I'm going to okay. watch it again. All right. So I'll watch this movie it over and over. Yeah, it's, it's entertaining enough that... Uh, I, I'll watch it again. Well, wouldn't you rather watch the director's cut? No, I don't care. Wow. <laughs> I don't care about that stuff, Ryan. It's, it, it's, I love you. I don't oh. like that stuff. I don't care. Oh, my God. It's just so much. There's so much more in it. Like <laughs> Ryan, I love you. I don't care about that stuff. <laughs> the theatrical I'm version watching is so what was I already told them seven <laughs> times we're not talking about the director's my cut. My mom just made me spaghetti and put it in front of me. Mom, this is good spaghetti, <laughs> but I know your stuffed peppers are better. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom does make really good stuff. I peppers. know, oh. but I'm just saying. I'm right. just saying. I, I'm not gonna true. sit there and be like, I, I don't even, like the spaghetti. I didn't even like stuffed peppers until <laughs> I had your mom's stuffed peppers. Well, <laughs> James, uh, it's Ryan's turn. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. My turn. Yeah. Um, I was 13 when I first saw this. Yeah. And I thought it was very cool, and I really liked it. Yeah. I came back and watched it again. I was disappointed watching it. Mm. But I would say this is a bad movie, and it rules. Yeah, yes. okay, wow. all right. Rock there and roll. Go. Rock and yeah. roll. I haven't seen the director's cut, so <laughs> no, when I see that... <laughs> Make sure. I might have to write in. Make sure. I Come just, on, good movies rule. This. No, I it's, just not. Saw, <laughs> it's not. It's not. I RB. just <laughs> saw the director's cut last night. I okay. have watched the theatrical version of Daredevil. Yeah. Once again, saw it when I was 15, and I thought this movie sucked when I was 15. So there, just to add some more you to had that. better taste in movies than I did. What do you, what do you think, James? 
I, I think this is a good movie. Oh. You think it's a good movie? Good full movie? stop. I think it's a good movie. I think you're a liar. Wow. I don't think I'm a liar. I think it's a good movie for what it is. I think <sighs> you have a guy for that... For what it is? A director, wow. a director that clearly loved the source material. Yes. That worked hard to deliver something that was would try to be a step above, you know, disposable comic book nonsense. 100% agree with you. Right? And in some time, in some, and he doesn't hit it at all points. Okay, they, missed they, the mark completely. Missed the mark uh, a lot of times. He did not a get a bullseye. He did. He did what he was set out to do. I think Ben Affleck's performance has been much derided uh, in the movie. I think he does try to do something interesting with the character. I think scene, there are scenes that ruin it, like the playground scene, uh, that aren't necessarily his fault. I don't put that on him at all. Uh, but I think overall, it's an inch, it's far more interesting than a lot of the stuff. That I mean, God, you put this up against Green Lantern, and I'd take Daredevil 2003 over Green Lantern any day of the week. Uh, yeah. I think it's a much better uh, movie. Can I also yeah. say and add yeah. something, piggyback onto that? Yeah. I think without this, mm -hmm. I think it makes Ben Affleck a better Batman. Maybe, yeah. Because I he, just feel like he kind of played Batman in this movie. I think maybe it is a precursor to that for him. I mean, he certainly at the time swore off ever wearing a suit again. He thought it was a horrible experience, but came back. Years, he ended up being one of my favorite Batman. Batman, yeah, I mean, and doing it well. So, so yeah, I, I'm I gonna think, say good movie. I think what James is really getting at is that this is a good movie that sucks. That's not. Oh my god, it's a good movie. Full stop. I hate when you say that. Okay, but I do <laughs> think that if we're trying to rate these not based on other stuff, I know that it it will seep in, right? But I think that like yeah. As its own product standalone. Yeah. I still think it's a good movie. Interesting. Yeah. I, I think if there's any kinds of things, I mean, it's teetering on the edge, right? Sure. And if there's a, any number of other things that had happened, it would have been like the, the bird landing on the car teetering over the edge in True Lies. You know what I yeah, mean? Like yeah. right. yep, yep. one more thing, probably like if, if the Ben and Jennifer thing didn't work or whatever, it, you know, it's probably like, yep, this is really, really bad. I sure. think there's enough for me to say it's a good movie. So, Interesting. So you and you, Lauren agree on this movie then? Yeah. When you awesome. left the theater in 2003, yeah. that is what you were thinking? Yeah, because I because I bought it. I mean, when it came out, I bought yeah. it. Yeah, I, I was. I remember being like, there's weird stuff in this movie, mm -hmm. right? We right. talked about that. But yeah, I mean, I, ha well, I owned it. At the it. time, we didn't have anything else to compare it to. No. You know what I mean? No. Like, like now, we have so many superhero movies that it's like, it's so enriched. We're able to take these and look back and go, eesh. Right. Or, and CGI or, has improved yeah. so much. Right. And, oh, yeah, know. for sure. So, I mean, I mean, you take Spider-Man now. Versus Spider Man, then mm -hmm. still a great movie, still fun to watch. Yeah. But man, the Spider Man stuff they're doing now is yeah. is amazing compared to what right. you know they were doing back then. Farrell, you're gonna love what Eric Valov had to say here. I can't wait. He said, "This is a good movie that's bad." There you go. He goes. I, yes. He goes. But then he goes. I know I'm being an asshole for yes. saying this. So at least he acknowledges <laughs> that uh, going against the rating system. But all the parts. Uh. That, but with all the parts that make up this film, people who can legitimately act. A budget increase of $30 million and a compelling character. It should be good. The failure of this film falls on Mark Steven Johnson. As both writer and director, he is the most responsible. The pacing, editing, and tone of the film jumped so much. Some things were hyper-authentic to the comic. They made huge jumps in character and tone away from the source material. He didn't learn his mistakes here when he directed Ghost Rider. Uh, he didn't learn from his mistakes. He had two actors who were both fans of the characters they portrayed. And in the end, they both ended up looking bad. I don't necessarily agree with that part, but I get what he's saying. He had two award-winning writers in the cast, one of which has an Oscar, and he should have picked their brain at every opportunity. I, I get what you mean, Eric, but that's not always possible to do. And I know you think like, well, they got these great writers around him, just but it's a lot of times those guys like Ben Affleck probably didn't want to rewrite Daredevil. He wanted to focus on what he was doing or well, whoever else was there. Really, at the time, it wasn't their place for that, right? Because this is now looking back at like, sure, you got Favreau who. Basically, Favreau, right. Favreau, yes. Favreau, who gave you Iron Man, who did yeah. Mandalorian, and Affleck, who did the writing on Batman with yeah. Chris Terrio and such. But right. Yeah, I don't know. He says, this is why the 2015, or he goes, the biggest mistake was making it PG-13. It's a violent, brutal character. The 2015 series worked well because it showed the violence. Certain characters are ruined when they're watered down. I mean, remember how mad you were when you saw Mystique beat up Wolverine and X-Men? The director's cut is a better film, but it too suffers. The unmasking of Daredevil is a poor choice, and it was short-sighted. I like the film despite its failure, but I see where it could have been so much more. So I think ultimately he likes it, but he says good movie that's bad. Whatever the hell, so, I'll never understand what that means. But, yeah, we're going to make yeah. a trend. Hashtag yeah. good movie that sucks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>
Adam Lofton said, we got CGI, if you can call it that, and a blind hero taking out bad guys. So when I first saw this, I was 15 years old. So I was like, peak needy turn, ne- peak nerdy teenager. Yep. I thought this movie was amazing and didn't see anything wrong with it. But rewatching it made me so sad because I was like, what was I thinking? So the whole like echo vision or whatever that allows Ben to see, I thought was cool. But man, it was hard this time. My favorite scene to this day is the double D fire in the subway. I thought it was a <laughs> badass scene. So I rated this movie as a Echo bad movie. vision. I like Echo that. Vision, yeah. Echo vision. Yeah. A bad movie that kind of rules. It's it was tough. It's early Marvel, but it has its enjoyable <laughs> moments. So as James knows, and this is what Adam always does. Uh, I think he did this with Green Lantern too. He said, "I always do fun facts with my emails." So here we go. First time Daredevil was ever seen in comics was Daredevil number one in April of 1964. Wow. wow. Take that, the crow. <clears throat> just remember, my friends, justice is blind. Good job there, guys. <laughs> and then lastly, man, they all had a ton to say. Usually it's uh, yeah. a little more of a day. I got, look at these paragraphs yeah, from yeah. these guys. Yeah. This has become Daredevil, quite, a, quite a divisive If nothing episode. else, Daredevil elicits a lot of feelings mm-hmm. from people here, right? And so yeah. lastly, we've got, and certainly not least, Sean McHugh says, I came into this hoping it, was, it wasn't as bad as I remembered. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> 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 Affleck and Garner gave wooden performances. Side characters were wasted. Side stories unresolved, horrible CGI. There are a few redeeming scenes. A bar fight at the beginning was amazing. There you go. Yep. You're easy there. Mm-hmm. But all in all, it seemed more like they tried to force the romance more than the actual story of Daredevil. But the story of Daredevil has always been Daredevil and Elektra. He does, and then he does review the director's cut as well. I, ugh. Sean, you didn't know. I'm not mad at you. <laughs> this is just my frustration <laughs> with Ryan Farrell boiling to the surface. That's what it is. Director's I cut. I knew better. Yeah, <laughs> bad movie that rules for the director's cut. So it looks like he's saying it's a bad movie for the regular one, bad movie that rules for the director's cut. Hmm. So, yeah. Uh, he does go into some detail here. About it's a, but, yeah, it, it's basically they, they bumped it up to the R rating. They put the F-bombs back in. Some other side stories. There's only two of them. Are brought to the front. It's really not yeah. even a raw rated director's cut. Just saying. That's yeah. funny. He says all the cheesiness is still there, but it doesn't distract from the film as much as the theatrical cut does. So... Ultimately, that's where he lands. And so I want to say thanks to the patrons on that. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. It's been, it's been good. It's been a good one for the patrons. It's been a good one. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I think we all landed in a good place. You're right. You know? You know what, James? What's Yeah, Ryan. What's I up? really think you're just an Evanescence fanboy. <laughs> that's fine. I'm an F- Evanescence fanboy, and you're a Christopher Nolan fanboy, and together we can call it <laughs> together. this. And keep and together, making, here we are. And keep making great podcast episodes. And... Uh, I'm excited to see what's going to happen next. And next week we've got, we're going off the rails for the next one. This oh is, boy. you know, occasionally we dig deep into the movies like the uh, the Hands of Steel and uh, things that are like, you got to go dig, f- like Prayer of the Roller Boys and maybe you can find them somewhere, but this yeah. is another one of those. You can find them on VHS at a thrift store. <laughs> right. What is it? <laughs> this is a movie called Vindicator. Nice. Vindicator. Is it on YouTube? It's on YouTube. It's the only way you can see it. I was it. just going to say, it's not that's available the only way else. you can see Vindicator. There's a couple different versions out there. Go find the Vindicator that does say it's 1080 upscaled. It's in the title. It's a better version, better quality version of it. And we'll be discussing that next week. We're not talking about the upscaled version today. No, we're not doing that today. <laughs> we are talking about a movie starring the, the only two people you probably would know from it is the guy that cooks the grits from My Cousin Vinny. <laughs> Nice. Okay. Yeah. Is in there. Yeah. And Pam Greer is also in this movie. So okay. Pam well, Greer. look, you should have led with Pam Greer. <laughs> <laughs> but they even do it to her. She's, all right, I'm not going to get into it in this. Well, tune in for Vindicator next week. Make sure you go watch it. It's only 90 minutes of your life. Go watch Vindicator on YouTube. In the meantime, just want to say thanks for tuning in to what's been at least the recorded length. I don't know what the edited length will be. Our longest episode we've ever oh, recorded. Come on. Get in two hours and 40 minutes. Oh, my so, God. Uh, thanks. Good thanks. job, Ryan. So I just want to say thanks to Ryan <laughs> Phil <laughs> and thanks to Kurt Bummer. Yeah, I was going to say. And the know. Dr. Ryan Madela. I'm James Hauser, and we just want to say thank you for listening. Hurt his shoulder, he can't fight right now. But wait 10 minutes and he still can't fight. <laughs> Never see it coming. Any minute now, my shoulder's gonna feel better and then I'm gonna still not fight you. 
Crawl over here. <laughs> Crawl over here. Yeah. You know what Daredevil likes in his ice water? What's that? Just ice. Oh. Oh, justice. I get it.